Hey, how's it been? Been a little while, everyone. Hey, everybody. Missed you. Hi. Hey. Um, welcome to Our Access Precipice Phase 3, known as Moloch's Gambit. We play the Expanse role playing game put out by Green Run and Publishing. Uh, we've been doing it now for more than a year. Uh, simply put, we're just we're just waiting for our, our lives to come in the mail and have lives, you know, have real lives. But uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, it's super cool that we're now like kind of in the third phase of this, which is taking place on the background of like uh, Abaddon's Gate. If you've read the James Corey novels, um, but uh, we have a very special guest to kick off the the phase. Uh, one, and I'll point down, uh, do the whole very Brady Bunch thing, but one B Zelda. Uh, B has uh, been kind enough to join us. And once again, sorry, last week we had to delay everyone, but uh, B was super cool about adapting uh, to our needs, and we appreciate having them here. B, why don't you tell everybody uh, who you are, what you do, and where they can find you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, all. Um, I am your non-binary busy B, which is to say you can find me on Twitter as at B underscore Zelda. I am a podcaster, a TTRPG Twitch streamer, and uh, the community manager for Alchemy RPG, which is a thematic, that's not the word, theatrical, cinematic, theatrical virtual tabletop. I'm really still figuring out how to pitch it. Honestly, don't know yet. I was going to say D all the above. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, and we'll be sure to link, uh, if you go either during the stream, if you want to send me a link in the, in the chat here, I'll be happy to post it on the, the Twitch chat for everybody to follow up and check out your work uh, with uh, yeah. Alchemy. All right. Um, we have, let me go check my checklist. I have a checklist for other stuff I have to do. Ooh. We have a giveaway. As always, we have a giveaway. Uh, our sponsor, Stonehaven Miniatures, decided that we're cool <laughs> enough and we're going we're good enough and we're going to keep it up and we're going to give out some miniatures uh, we have a set of six pure miniatures let's go they sent me a yeah. bunch of miniatures i try to put them by theme these ones are like swashbucklers Ooh. uh it's swashbucklers versus kobolds <laughs> and there's treasure I'll play that a piratical adventure a, a piratical seems. adventure yeah and there's a little treasure there's a little uh box of like a little treasure box it's hard to, it's, I, there's no way the camera can pick this up Little box of treasure with a little scope and uh, some sticks of dynamite. That or their uh, <laughs> six pack of beer, I can't tell. But either way, mm -hmm. someone's gonna have a good time. But, uh, Why not whatever, both? Give <laughs> me both. <laughs> it, 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 it'd be the 50 50. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'll be, we'll be sure to be giving this away tonight, too. Let me go ahead and set up my giveaway. That was the one thing I forgot to do was set up the giveaway. Ooh. It's been, y'all, it's been like a month since we've been back. It is so, true. like. Give us a mild um, amount of grace. We're getting back into this thing. Who are yes. you people? What am I Who doing here? <laughs> Where am uh, I? <laughs> keyword tonight for the giveaway is, I believe it's navy. Navy? Like the blue the color of B's shirts? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> Which I might add, you can purchase over on cauldronandtower.bigcartel.com. Uh, I can remember how you even spell that one, too. Pass. You can go grab uh, some cool gear there too and enjoy some finely printed mm -hmm. Avrox Precipice shirts and the like. But yes, the or keywords dice. Are... Dice, yes, you can use the dice. They roll extremely well. Or the uh, shirt. Or that shirt, that which shirt I also too. have. Just super cool. We got this one, one. one Michael did. Yeah. Uh, you, you guys, I think those at home can figure it out. We haven't, we haven't like talked to each other for a month, so like we, the energy is just like bursting out and it's uh, and <laughs> B, B's just having to deal with that. <laughs> B's gonna feel. have to feed off of this is the thing oh, right. feel. we're gonna like feed I wouldn't have already offered this <laughs> very cool um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start off our goal for the month too if we hit our goal our, our lofty goal of 100 subs I know that is very lofty but I am the loftiest uh, I will also include with our giveaway winner for the month a copy of the Expanse board game by WizKids Games out of print, very hard to find. This one's sealed, and it is oh, damn good. Cool. It's very good, yeah. Uh, I I suggest you go. Anyone goes up and look up, uh, look it up on eBay because it is not uh, not affordable. <laughs> I will oh. say, but it's a very good game, and I I, I absolutely adore it. Um, but um, yes, uh, I, I've been holding that copy now for a year. And I haven't given it out, but then again, I haven't got hundred subs. But hey, when I get hundred subs, someone's gonna get a very cool board game and have a lot of fun with it. I probably throw in some dice too, um, but uh, and then last but not least, our Patreon is our best way to support us. If you like the stream, you can go on there. We preview stuff. We actually put up a preview of some character art we're having done 
Uh, that's only up there for our patrons. Uh, this is kind of the early sketches. We're very, very excited. Literally, when we first got on Zoom today, like that was like the buzz. I, I, I left the room and everybody's talking. Yeah, like, it was, I love the art. They like, were mm-hmm. freaking out about it. Like they, it was, it's it was so good. Right. So good. It's so it's good. y'all aren't ready for. It. You're not ready. <laughs> but they're just the sketches. They're amazing. And they were yeah. just sketches. Yeah, that was like no color, just 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 a lot of lines. They're uh, awesome. And we're very excited about that. So, but, but that. That's the kind of stuff. If you support the stream, it helps us do and, and helps keep on bringing on cool people and, and reaching out and keeping the stream quality. That all said, let's kick it off. Abrax Precipice, Moloch Gambit, and we will be back in about a minute. everybody uh hopefully you enjoyed the new opening that was a lot of fun to make um the ring is formed out beyond uh uranus it is uh sitting way way out in the into the black mars earth sent science ships little few little support ships here and there but the um the opa navy by having ships lacks infrastructure they don't have the support but they got the they got the people. They got the belters. One such belter that joined up into the OPA Navy, or someone might argue, even argue it got conscripted, but we'll say joined, um, was one Lieutenant a Johnny. This is embarrassing. Okay, uh, Gangnong. Close enough. Okay, <laughs> I, do you want to say it for me so I, I don't I don't. You gotta really like swallow the G. Gang Yong. 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 So, um, and who spent their life building, uh, building a small corporation that, uh, provided telecommunications for high end, uh, innards on Titan to make sure they could talk to their families as, as quickly as possible, but now has gone off into the OPA Navy. As such, um, the OP Navy is attempting to deploy a series of relay satellites out towards uh, the ring. Uh, and this has proposed a, a significant challenge because the ring does not orbit. It just sits. Um, but they uh, have used several other ships, including the Sinclair. The Sinclair right now has gone out past Saturn, far as any of you have ever been, honestly. Um, even uh, uh, Lieutenant Johnny, this is as far as you've ever gotten out. Mm-hmm. Um, posting up four satellites, four relay satellites. So when the OPA wants to go out there, they have the way to talk back and forth to Ceres Station and whoever else they need to talk to. Um, you deploy two of the satellites, or sorry, one of the satellites. You're on the second satellite. Right now, the Sinclair's sitting out, out in the, the deep, dark, uh, vast of space. The sun's just a bright star in the, in the, on the, out somewhere. Um, we have, uh, Lieutenant Johnny, you're in a full EVA suit. Waxer, you're wearing the, the spider mech with the four arms. Uh, and you're holding the, uh, the satellite. One of the satellites this is the second one you've set up. You're, once again, you've been upgraded to payload specialist. This is a payload. Yeah. 
So, so now you're uh, you 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 both are getting ready to set it up to uh, start uh, turn it on, set, test it, all that kind of stuff. The rest of the crew, Zenny, Myrtle, Wyatt, you're sitting uh, on the Sinclair, monitoring it, checking for things, or whatever you guys want to be working on. Um, who who wants to who wants to tell me what they're what they're up to while on this mission? Um, I think Zenny's primarily um, sticking on comms in case there's any sort of relays that need to be um, thrown about any any whares, um, and also just kind of like keeping keeping an eye on like the things that are happening around, like in space around our ship. Um, just kind of being like a weather eye on the horizon, kind of. I mean, as far as the ship's concerned, there's nothing for like I mean. Almost a million kilometers. I mean, there's nothing. And out that's here. what I hope to yeah. see. <laughs> um, you, the the only thing, the one thing that the Comrie on the Sinclair is doing is it's locked onto the previous satellite uh, you you guys did set up. And th the idea there is that the trick now is to like keep that one knowing where that one's position is to link it to this next one. Otherwise, it's gonna you're gonna you basically put a very expensive piece of hardware floating in space doing mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so a lot of the the, the comrade is largely uh, mostly on that. But you are you are able to receive broadcast or you know your tight beams so like too. Um, but uh, largely, I, I don't know, Myrtle. Would you would you have the ship floating dark here? Or would this uh, is this kind of mission or Johnny? Or would you even give the the, the order to say float dark? No, you know, try to keep it low key or. It feels appropriate. That's probably been the safest thing, like historically, to do mm -hmm. um, when setting up a relay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of pay attention, see where the loot needs me, and uh, what's going on outside. I know that Zenny's got everything, um, you know, is listening to everything, and I'm just there to just manage everything else. Yeah, and and you're you're sitting there watching the uh, and up in the the cockpit, and Mikhail's sitting there. He's looking at you. He's like, yeah, Cap, I got stay. Pretty easy to do. It's all, the only thing we're gonna hit out here is a straight helium at him. No. Yeah, yeah, this should be fine. Everything Problems. should be great. Um, Wyatt, did you want to check in on your on your your man on the outside, or? Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna keep contact with Waxer throughout out throughout all in case something happens and he needs help as quick as possible. Right. Waxer, how how you feeling about being on the mech in zero G? I mean, you've done the mech work on docks before, but being out in the like the true black, I mean, true Belter like space, yeah. that? It, it's a little eerie, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, kind of peaceful, but uh, sort of creepy. So I, I, I want to try to set up this uh, satellite for the the LT real quick, okay. and get back on, get back on the board, yeah. All right, Johnny, you got your EVA pack on. You got your, your full suit, no problem. You can see the mech there, and you're you're actually uh, tethered to the mech. You can go off tether if you want to, but being tethered to the mech's probably a little safer. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what do you, what do you want to? Uh, you're out in the deployment zone, no problem. You can you're in with well within range. Your HUD's reading all the information, feeding back from the Sinclair sensors and the link up to the original, the first satellite you put up. Um, also, now I like to let I like to let my guest players kind of contribute to our lore. B, do you do you have a name for this satellite link up system that you've created? <laughs> um I think that they are named after not me looking for inspiration in the space all around me. Um, there's four of them, correct? Yeah, it'll be four total, yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll have fall, summer, uh, winter, and spring. Okay, so you got the four yeah. seasons? Mm-hmm. Okay, so the four seasons. Okay, so right now, which one are you on? Um, I think we are on uh, spring. Spring, okay. So, uh, yeah, you can see Waxer through the, the glass and the, and the kind of stuff. You can see this spring, which is this uh, satellite you're putting together. And you've probably one of the most expensive things you've ever used the mech for. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, Johnny, it uh, looks like Waxer's just kind of waiting for your order to deploy this thing or uh, you can start calibrating it, turn it on and check all the stuff. But Yeah, where, where do you want me to put this uh, expensive piece of equipment, LT? <laughs> I don't want to drop it. You think this is expensive? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Look fancy. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, I'm just gonna put it a little bit to the left. Yeah, like that. Yeah, a little bit more. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, and let's stop to the right. Okay, yeah. Okay, both so good, so good. Okay, that's right. Okay, now stop and deploy. Deploy, yeah. Now. Uh, wait, wait. Okay, now. Okay. And the, the, the clamps of the mech release uh, slowly, and the thing goes kind of the mech kind of pulls back, and the the satellite sits there. Um, 
Johnny, I mean, Waxer, Waxer's not, he, doesn't, he's, he knows how to move the thing, he doesn't know how it really works, but uh, the thing has self-correcting jets on it too, so it'll it'll position itself nicely, but... Hey, hey look perfectly <laughs> deployed. Everything look good. Uh, wait, no, see, that's, that's good, yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> that's, uh, let's go back inside. I'm going to run some well, you, scans and we'll see. Do you, do you want to interface? You can interface with it on your, your uh, panel on your arm real quick if you want to. Uh, I couldn't remember what, if the panel had a name. Um, Does the panel have a name? Uh, your little computer on your arm? <laughs> oh, I thought you said it had um, a name. Okay, I was like, I'm, I'm good either way. I, I wasn't, I play a lot of systems where, um, like the, the system in which you, Played a lot of games with systems that your character has a digital system okay. and that interface has a name. And I was, I had to take a moment to think like, is it called the, like, what do they use in, uh, um, hmm. It's fine. My brain's not freezing. Uh, <laughs> Shepherd? In which one? Um, pardon? A Zephyr, you said? Shepherd. Shepherd. We'll call it that. We're just okay, going to call, call it Shepherd. Mm -hmm. Well, it is, and it's not a bad name because it is a system instead of guidance and it's going to guide the thing into position. Oh, so that yeah, kind of does make like sense. Um, so, we, um, so yeah, you, you go and interface with it and the, the immediate system communications for it are really good, no problem. Uh, it comes up that it's green. It's the same as when you uh, when you first checked it before you opened up the, the cargo bay. Um, it, uh, it kind of starts lighting up and everything like that too. Um, your diagnostics come back initially good. Now it's just a matter of like using the comm system, the, the relay system on the, or the, the, yeah, the comm array on the Sinclair to actually make sure the position is correct and apt and ready to go. And it's all calibrated. So yeah, you're, you got your initial diagnostics coming back uh, green and everything. Okay, we have Verte all across the board. This is good. Uh, green, that is such a beautiful color. Verte, it's truly the color of success. All right, let's communicate with, uh, what is your ship? Is it Sinclair? Sinclair, two words I might add. It's Sin, then, then the name Claire, yeah. I like that. <laughs> <a> funny story. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's a long story. I'll tell you about it sometime, LT. <laughs> uh, if I ever spend more time here, on uh, we'll see, we'll see. You guys got about another, uh, you know, two and a half months of, of this deployment to get back. <laughs> Oh, I think long. from the day I met them, I've been like pretending like I'm gonna not see them tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's fair. All right, so it's a bad sign for me. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, spring, go ahead. Uh, starts position. It, it, it's kind of ready to be positioned, but it wants the, it needs the higher calibration from the ship, and you want to do that, you know, hands on. Um, then you can see that the 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 satellite's been activated. Uh, Myrtle and uh, Wyatt, you can see that Waxer is turning the mech around to spin it around to bring it back to the, the there. Um, the co-pilot, Mikhail's like, you know, he's like, yeah, we're all steady, ready to go. They can dock any time, no problem. Um, and the mech can fit through the airlock. It, the airlock is big enough for the mech to collapse its arms into. I feel like that might have been like an intentional uh, rigging to ensure that the mech could fit. It's a st it's a standard size airlocks and it's a, it's a standard it's not a huge mech it's it's just more of like a, a elaborate kind of body suit with like okay. arms yeah that kind of floats in space um, used for moving big things like that too you could have done this by hand if you really wanted to strap a cord to it and put your EVA pack on but the mech's a little little bit uh, safer yeah, safer <laughs> yeah you won't you, you're less likely to crush your thumb. I think that's the, I think that's a trick. Fun, yeah. That's that's the only thing so, I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah, you guys cruise on back to the Sinclair. Uh, it's no problem. Airlock cycles through, no problem. Uh, the mech comes through. Um, you guys are in the cargo hold, no problem. Uh, Wax, so you come in and uh, the airlock shifts over. You're still in the mech suit. So you have to you have to take it off inside the actual cargo hold. Um, okay. And uh, as you come in, you see um, Nick Michael standing there, and he he's just sitting there, kind of like. Uh, you see him with like a, like a like he has like a vape pen now. Like he, he's not allowed to smoke the real stuff anymore on the ship. Yeah. And he's like, how'd it go? Hey, hey what smooth? Uh, we got it deployed. Uh, I'm back in. But uh, man, you you got to go out there sometime. It's something to see. He takes another breath. He goes, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's like, nah. He's like, man, I miss Ganymede. That was easy. Yeah. You got a ceiling up above you. He's, he's, yeah, well, we got we got two down, and we only got two more. So uh, if you change your mind, no. yeah. And we got. I'm certified for it. Doesn't mean I want to do it. Uh, <laughs> but we got three more weeks till we're out there. Okay. Yeah. 
He goes, well, pretty uh, smooth though. Pretty, pretty smooth, yeah. You go, yeah, LT. How, how the, how am I looking? Uh, it's it's looking uh, it, it's all there it's all good um I just have to ask do you have zero ambition like absolutely nothing that there's like there's when you fall asleep do you not dream is there nothing in your brain? <laughs> he's like I, I he's like well I mean I only end up with these folks because the mirrors fell on Ganymede and they rescued me so I, I mean this is farther than I ever thought I'd go so this is pretty cool. Uh, allow yourself a little bit of grace um. You're, you're doing okay, and don't don't vape. It makes you look, um, uh, not not ship appropriate. Well, I used to. I, he's he's, all, he's all, That's what I'm saying, man. I want. I want. We're OPA Navy. We're supposed to show people how like badass we are. We gotta go up against Martians. We're gonna go against others. I used to smoke. I used to actually roll them and smoke them. But the XO said no, no more of that under uh-huh. the Navy. I gotta. I can't have that uh-huh. debris around and everything. So now I gotta vape it up. But you know. I would also say, uh, you know, when he's not uh, smoking something, uh, he he gets act, he act up way more. <laughs> all, and besides, it's medicinal. And he reaches over and like lifts up his uh, left leg and like knocks on. You can see that it's fake. Like he has a bionic left leg. You know, for the pain. <laughs> That's what he always say. Well, um, I'm just going to tell you a little trick. Um, and Johnny is going to kind of lean in closely. When you vape like that, you look like a douche. <laughs> but that's fine, you know? Continue to represent us, it's us. C'est d'accord. Um, I have official business to attend to. Um, I have some things to monitor, so um, uh, oh, uh, at, at ease. Uh, uh, absolutely, sir. And he like salutes and everything. And he, he gives like a, he try get, he's trying to give his best salute. He's not mocking, but he's trying to do his best. But he's not the most disciplined guy, mm-hmm. but. I kind of I kind of look at Nick Michaels on the way out and be like, Told you, yeah. Look, she, she would. They say, yeah, douche. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of it. I'm like, and I just sort of like fall. Yeah, I okay. back up LT. He's like, just you, he's like, yeah. You think you're a specialist, huh? All right. So <laughs> she walk off, um, and he goes back into he goes back into engineering. Um, you go up, you go up the, the ladder, uh, Waxer. Do you follow in pursuit to go check on them? Okay. You come yeah. up to the the. Um, command deck you can see ops and everything like that too you can see where like the positions on the maps are and everything like that too the link up and you have the link from the, the original satellite and the new one's ready to get linked uh, it's now linked to the sinclair but it's a matter of like getting those two to make sure they're they're talking to each other and such so it's gonna be a little bit of maneuvering and the like uh to get them to, to link up and such all right yeah i take a big interest in it I, just because helping deploy it now i want to see everything activate and connect so I kind of want to just like look at, watch what everybody's doing. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of a moment for the OP Navy that like, you know, through your guys, you know, the suffering, the belters and the, and the blood, sweat and tears, they're actually building yeah. something. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're actually trying to push beyond these little, you know, balls of, of rock and air that they've had. Yeah, um, I, feel, I feel real proud in uh, participating and setting this system up. So, yeah, and that'll, that'll go in the that'll go in the recruitment brochure. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, uh, Danny, you're sitting there at the ops, uh, and uh, you have uh, Lieutenant Johnny's kind of. Are you, are you hovering? Do you, does, does Lieutenant hover? hover? Do you want to go find your own seat? Or no, I'm gonna hover. Over? Okay, hover. Okay, hover. <laughs> so you're kind of give a little, kind of leaning in, give a little mentorship to Zanny here about like you know, tele- telecommunications. Hmm. Sick. <laughs> that's, that's real. That, that's real good. <laughs> I'm glad about that. <clears throat> Uh, have you, is, is there a manual that you have read? About, I, I brought, I, I, did, I, did you get the email with the 500 page PDF? I, I have, um, a lot there of There are ex- some pictures, so it's more like, ah, uh, cat, cat, cat sounds, set, uh, it's like 400? I, so I, I, I did, I got, yes. Oh, okay, is, is that why you are, uh, you continue to press that button that just kind of, it's a decorative button. That doesn't really provide <laughs> anything. Then you give me a technology check, Tester. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it's really bad. <laughs> yeah. Seven. Okay. But you six, you put you, you punch in some stuff and you send the new satellite you just use deployed into uh, diagnostic mode, going through self testing, which is what you guys did before you deployed it. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. doing that again. So it's just doing kind of this like kind of cycle through and everything like that too. It'll take about um, this process will take about like thirty minutes. Okay. Um, you are just looping the the, the diagnostic. Is that, is that how you is spend that, your time here? Is just repeating the same tasks? It, uh, I, there's nothing else to do right now. Uh, there's no one. There's no one talking to us. There's no one out and about. There's a lot of other crew who's doing a lot of other things. So yes, I am looping it around again because it's better to have it done twice and know that it's for sure not going to do anything bad, right? Mm, c'est bon. That's that's correct. Yeah, no, c'est bon. I like that. I never. I only do a diagnostic the minimal amount of times because once I see that there, the green, I think it's good enough. But uh, that's. Zen, you said your name was. Uh yeah 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 yeah, uh, hey. Lieutenant. Tell me more about your, uh, <laughs> your repeat diagnostic abilities. <laughs> continuing to hover. They are, uh, recent skill set. Oh. Um. Uh, how did you acquire them? A lot of reading and watching other people do it. Ah, you do? Okay. I, it is sometimes difficult because I have come from a place where I read so much and yet nobody actually wants to read a, a, a 900 page manuscript about how to install relays. It, it, I cannot imagine why it is not uh, magnifique or anything like that. It's odd. I, yeah, it's, uh, I definitely um, read the entire thing, back, front to back, for sure. Every time I wow. every time. Uh, who is your favorite writer? Uh, well, right now um, there's this Arthur who uh, is writing uh, some books about uh, about Beltas. Uh, oh. uh, Harper, if you know uh, if you know who uh, she is, uh, she's an interesting interesting I... way of the world you, uh, Johnny you you would know this person They're, they actually like are uh, kind of an earth anthropologist that wrote a kind of exploitative piece about the belter life. <laughs> I knew it was going to be trash as soon as I heard it oh okay <laughs> uh I don't think it's it's not subtle, by the way, that Zenny is just telling you answers to get you to maybe move on to something, something, and somewhere else. They, they're not being subtle about it either. <laughs> I'm just sitting in the background watching and kind of giggling. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'm eventually, yeah, I'm like, I'm like occasionally like just kind of like slightly looking past the lieutenant, just being literally eyeing anyone else here, being like, help, <laughs> hey. Yeah, Sigma. Wax has got his like head down. I don't, I don't want to dr- pay attention. For the LT action, <laughs> so just uh, quietly standing. Um, <clears throat> uh, Johnny, you're you're watching the as you see the diagnostics go, diagnostics going on the uh, screen behind you uh, or behind Zenny. Is Zenny's kind of like you're, you're dressing her down a little bit here? Uh, something there's a, there's a little. A little yellow line pops up, a little line that seems kind of out of place for the diagnostic pops up. Yellow hey, pause, no pause. Guess who's say, what, what is that? I push the button that seems right. superfluous, yeah, but in fact will stop everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the diagnostic <laughs> listing stops, and you can see there's this highlighted part that shows like, a, kind of like a, it's not an error, but it's showing that like there's some sort of interference that it, it's like it's like caught some sort of uh like signals trying to like bounce off of it that shouldn't be bouncing off it or it's not expecting during the during the diagnostic thing okay. zenny like taps the screen and turns towards the lieutenant and says this is why we do two diagnostics <laughs> things change within 10 minutes this is good this is excellent uh, this okay, okay if you understand the um uh, one of the manuals that i absolutely sent you um it describes um page 50 uh 500 uh, 567 it describes um uh, what happens when there is a communication that is uh unauthorized so this is excellent i wonder if we can uh can we like capture it and like oh yeah and the, the, okay. all, all the data stored all the data stored yeah so you, you you kind of pull it up and you can see like where it, it 
it's saying like there's interference coming from like this one like uh kind of like a you, you do you want to do you want to open it up and like see what it actually got oh everything? absolutely okay. yeah i'm gonna hover over zenny like lean over <laughs> and, start, start and push just the start buttons. pressing the okay. buttons and okay. like yeah Good. Do her job for her. Gotcha. Absolutely. So yeah. Okay. So you so you start. Uh, she gets a little imposing. Or, or sorry. I'm uh, trapped. Johnny gets, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm little, trapped. Little, little I, I can't. From, from I'm, just, I'm, and, I'm just uh, here now. <laughs> yeah. You're like I, this is where I exist. This is my life now. Thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, but Johnny, you're going through it, and it pulls up, and it, it's showing like that there was um, what looks like what looks to be kind of a signal uh, came in from someplace outside the elliptical of it. Like it, this wasn't like on the elliptical. It, a different angle and mm -hmm. it looks like something uh some sort of frequency you're guessing like based on this kind of element i'll give you uh maybe you make a roll here i feel like i need to have people nice let's get a roll uh, let's yes. go roll johnny, better than i did but johnny why don't no you promises. roll this will just be a straight <laughs> engine uh well this is a straight technology test so uh you get to roll the dice and add seven to it and because this is uh this is part of your specialty uh you get an extra plus one of this so add eight to whatever you get nice technology Let's go. Apologies, I'm friend. Uh, 11 plus 8, and then my other dice, I add that number as well. No, just the off, the, off you add the whole, all the dice together, and then you, uh, that, that die number is just like what your success rate is, basically. So it's like, so you got 11 total plus Dwayne. one. Okay. So it becomes a 13. Oh, 13. Oh, yeah, 11. Oh, yeah. nice. Okay, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good high number. So you, you go in, you got kind of a, you got a low success, basically, is what it is. And so you kind of, you're looking at it. And like, yeah, there's like a signal came from outside the elliptical. So like outside of like where the, the planets orbit, this is off from wherever the ring is. And people usually don't travel outside the elliptical. It's kind of, it's, mm. it's a lot more, it's a lot more energy. Um, but like, as far as looking at the kind of signal is usually like, I mean, you'll get background radiation and, and crap coming from it and everything like that too. But this is like a pretty strong signal. I just, I just watched this thing that they actually say, like if you took like, a, like an old Nokia cell phone and shot it into space where the moon is, it would be the strongest radio wave coming to Earth. Interesting. So, it, so something. So this is something that distinctly much more powerful than just background radiation. Okay. Um, but something like through a signal at the satellite specifically, um, not necessarily a tight beam, but something specific at this thing. And and it, there wasn't any communication. It wasn't trying to like do a handshake. Uh, but it was yeah, just. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Okay. It was just someone was pinging it. Hmm. Another ship. Another satellite, maybe. I'll pipe up as I walk out. Okay, so the XO, executive yeah. officer of the ship, Wyatt Thompson, comes over and sees, gets a little, gets into it, and uh, yes, come, come here, come closer. Uh, we are trying to examine this. I we cannot decide if it is another ship. It is not a communication because there is nothing there. It is simply a, a ping. They were uh, just reaching out to see what they could find, but it, it might be problematic if they, if they find our relays and decide that they are not. What they think is beneficial when we are in the middle setting it up. Yes, yes. Sydney, you want to try pinging it again? Well, you know, uh, I I, I, I'm imagining that this conversation is happening directly above yes. Zenny's uh -huh. head. The adults <laughs> kind of like, yes, the adults. Yeah, and <laughs> Zenny's just going to like duck under your like discussion and like lean forward and and try to try to relay pinpoint it and like try to get some sort of communication forming as best as they so can you you know the direction it came from but you don't know how far out it came you could try to turn okay. this you would have to turn the scopes uh from the sinclair out that direction and start scanning mm -hmm. for something out that way yeah um, i would i would you want to do uh, that so long as it's yeah so long as it's not interfering with what we've already done um then yeah i'll do whatever this I would actively delay it i will say that it would delay mm -hmm. that but um I think this is more important. I'm making the decision myself, not consulting either the captain or the lieutenant, that this seems more important, so I'm going to do that. And if they get mad at me, they get right. mad at me. <laughs> so, you, so you go and you kind of pull off the, the, the sensors to that. And luckily, one thing that Johnny has been doing on the ship since you guys have been traveling is upgrade the sensor package. Um, Yours was so good Zenny, as well. give me a um, roll a, a technology test, and you get an additional... I think there's uh, plus two to this because of the sensor package. Excellent. Uh, uh, 13 is 13. what I got. Okay. Um, the, the sensor shoots off and like, I mean, you're not seeing anything. Um, 
But Johnny, you're you're watching what looks to be a child with a pile of clay try to be Michelangelo. <laughs> Um, with, with, the, with the sensor package you recently installed. It, 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 yeah, it hurts. It, it hurts, yeah. It's, it's rough to watch. Ooh. I'm still figuring it out, oh, you oh, know. The, the heart's in the right place? <clears throat> I'm used to having to deal with, like, the janky stuff that we had. And this, yeah. is, this is like driving around, you know, a 1986, like, Ford truck, and then all of a sudden you get a 2022 Maserati. Like it's like you don't have to correct for the wobbly wheel and the steering. Exactly, and so you're overcompensated, and like also exactly, exactly. Like that's kind of how I'm visioning this (laughs) being, and definitely not that I don't know what I'm doing. Hundred percent, hundred percent, absolutely. No, 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 no. Uh, Waxer will chime in and just be like, uh, "Exo, uh, LT, do I need a suit back up and uh, take a look at? Do you want me out there, or you guys all got it in here? Yeah." I think you could stay in here for now. I wouldn't risk going outside, right, for a little bit. Yeah, okay. McMichael's was actually uh, he was re-prepping the suit just in case it had to be redeployed for the next deployment. He was already on on that task, so he's actually doing his job. Wow. I'm gonna kind of wow. look down from uh, from my chair okay. and just go, "Hey, XO, everything all right down there?" I think so. We had some kind of ping on the satellite we just put out. We're gonna see if we can figure out what that is and see if it's gonna be a problem. Okay, cool, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and and just kind of make sure everything's ready in case we need to move. Okay. Good call. You go and, and contact. You know. Yeah, you throw you throw the the message down to Justine down in engineering. Uh, she goes, you know, uh, yeah, Sessa, okay, got no problem. We're ready to go anytime you need to go, uh, Captain. Okay. And everyone's like ready. So, yeah, just you, all you gotta do is give them the sign and like with give them 30 seconds, they'll all be in crash couches. So, that's the current assignment. You have to give them 30 seconds of a crash couch. Got it. Or, or get ready to, you know, be a part of the bulkheads. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'll just yell back down to, uh, Wyatt. I was like, hey, I'm just ready, just in case anybody needs to, um, you know, run for a seat. Absolutely. Thanks, Cap. Yep. I suppose you run pretty well here. Um, except, uh, Zenny, excuse me, I just have to. Um, and they're going to, like, elbow a little bit their way through you. To... I'm going to just go ahead and get out. Like, as you elbow, I'm just going to turn the chair and, like, slide out of the crash couch but... and just, like, very dramatically turn it towards you and gesture towards... Oh, merci. Uh, finally, I don't know why you didn't really offer that before. The, the funny part about this, is, Annie, is that the LT could have simply sat at any one of the other three stations and transferred the controls over, but... I'm going to go sit at one of those other three stations and just okay. let them have this one. <laughs> and you start going through... It's yeah. warm still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Johnny, yeah, yeah, yeah. You sit down into the, the comm <laughs> setup here. Um, go ahead and roll uh, as you start kind of sifting through it, trying to figure out what this thing is. You start trying to realign it. Yeah, roll the dice and add a nine doing, to it. Okay, actually, technology sorry. plus two? Actually, plus, actually plus another one because you use it specially. So yeah, so plus ten actually. Okay. You were very, very good at this. This is your, your jam. Ooh, yeah, it makes sense there. that they would be like poking at Zenny because Zenny's this is not Zenny's specialty. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to teach you, you know? I, pre- I appreciate that. Zenny doesn't. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm gonna only ask this one more time. I know you've answered it every time, but it refuses to stay in my brain. Okay. I'm counting every all three all, dice. All three dice, and then add ten. Thank you. Okay, um, that is going to be ten plus six is sixteen. Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Oh, very yeah. nice. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wait, wait, and what'd you, wow. on, what'd you get on the off color die? Ah, very nice. Okay. okay. So you got a, you got a big result here. Yeah. Um, That's it. And you you uh, pan through. Uh, I'm gonna have you. I roll double, so I'm gonna give you a, a stunt. You get the speed demon stunt. Dice. Oh yeah, I was supposed to tell you yeah. that. Yeah, you get you have the speed demon stunt. So you do this like at half the time. You're watching Zenny stumble with this, and you just go click clack. Um, and uh, I got it, it set up for. I got it halfway. Got it warmed up, right? I got it halfway yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the up. thing starts uh, <laughs> starts panning the the line, and you're looking at the background radiation of all, and you kind of see the all the out of the stars and everything like that too. No ships, nothing picking up. But you do kind of catch this one spot of sky that, that way out, probably of, like I mean, we're talking like a few like million, like maybe a million saw, like two million clicks out there. Okay. With a little warm, it comes back a little warm with a weird shape to it. Usually, you can kind of pick up the shapes of the background radiation, but this one, like either it's like some weird uh, like extra like extra outside of the elliptical body that's floating there, or like. 
the hell it is, but something's there. Um, but mm-hmm. you don't get much back from it. Not not enough to like identify anything like that. And you you really pinpointed this thing. You did damn well on it. Uh, Exo, where are you? Come here. Uh, Can you look at this? Okay. Yeah. What am I looking at? What you tell me? It is. It's just a warm spot. It's it's unidentifiable. Why? Well, give me a security test, and you get. A, I'm going to give you an extra plus two on this for your past experiences. Oh no. Uh. <laughs> Uh-oh. What is secure? Is that communication? Uh, that's under intelligence. Oh, intelligence? Yeah, that's worse, but... <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. That's actually not bad. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. You're looking at the signal and, and like, I mean, yeah, you, you've, you've looked at stuff like this before. The outside of the ship stuff's not really your, not really your, your main thing here. But, um, yeah, it, it does look weird. You agree that it's weird. As far as what it is, you, you're not really sure what it is. Um, or is it away from us? I, I mean, mean, the the the, the com the array says it's or the sensor array says it's probably like uh, two million uh, kilometers out there. It's a ways out there. I mean, you guys can get on it like pretty quick if you really want to gun the engine to get there. But uh... hey, Cap, what do you think? You think we should go check this out or just kind of? And you send the information up to the up to the cockpit. Problem. Yeah. Um. Hmm. That's kind of not all that close. Um. Maybe see if it starts heading closer. I don't want to just throw everybody in seats and then, you know, get lost out there. So I I, let's let's just kind of stay the course right now and um, we'll see what develops from it. We will keep an eye on it because I am curious. I know this this is this investigation will delay our mission, but ah, so I cannot help it. Well, Luke, I mean, if you want us to go, we can. You know, we can. We can go. I mean, because I mean, you've got this thing. You've got to set up the whole. We got to set up the relay and all this stuff. But if you really, really want to go, you're the boss here. I know. They, they gave me a bunch of um, <clears throat> um, what do you call it? Uh, power. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. We it's, can it's all see fine. that. Yes, yeah. Um, uh, let's, um, uh, we should also, I think we should wait. I just want to uh, put in perspective real quick that the two million kilometers, you guys are currently about 93 million kilometers from Saturn, so two million is not terrible. Interesting comparison. It's, it's kind of <laughs> whether or not we want to just like, you know, yeah, drop everything just, and, and go. We could just keep an eye on it for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's, let's see where we are oh. in an hour. Yeah. Um, Especially if it pings it again. If you're if you're mm-hmm. really uh, curious about this, Johnny, uh, you certainly could turn Spring onto it and try to have Spring try to scan the thing. Spring has better sensors than the Sinclair does for sure. Much newer. Okay. Oh yeah. Push. I think if we're gonna wait an hour, you know, um, before we make another decision, um, which poor Johnny is just gonna be like, yeah, I, I definitely agree. I, I came up with that idea. Um, <laughs> then they would probably kind of on their own time run some other scans, and if that's the method, then that's probably the coolest way. You you run in a mm-hmm. quick program, tilt to tilt, tilt, and to scan that that part of the sky. Um, it comes, it, it does for a little bit here. Uh, give me another technology test. This time, add twelve total. Ooh, okay. It's a better. It's a better These system. Are good. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's mostly your skill. You're good. <laughs> this is your specialty. <laughs> Adding 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 plus. Yeah, no, plus that makes 20, sense. 22. 23, 12 plus 12. I already said 11 plus 12. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, yeah. And what did you, you go on the big die, the, the off Okay. Two. Two. Okay. <laughs> it goes out there. It, 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 this thing scans, and this thing should be able to pick up whatever that's thing. It should be able to see farther, uh, better, easier, clearer. And even at that distance, this thing should be pretty easy to spot, no problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it it takes a look at it, and what it brings back is like there's something there, but it's not coming back clear. Whatever it is, it's not it's not operating. Uh, do you want to share this information with the rest of the crew, or just certain people on the crew, the captain, the XO? Or do you want to keep I'm going to share it with Zenny first. Okay. Oh, um, I'm so I'm so privileged. Zenny, so <laughs> Johnny comes in with a scan and is. The, is a very blurry image of 
there's like it's like really almost black gray on uh -huh. black sky and it's pointing at this thing and saying this is important <laughs> do you see right. this 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 is the thing that we are looking at and i cannot understand uh zenny and like they're just gonna mm. like monologue to you the tests okay. that they ran you know how long it took the calibrations that were necessary i'm Not hearing just like white noise as i'm trying to see like because i can see that there is there is a disturbance in the dark blackness, which is weird and should not be there. So I'm just like really focused on that and like just not, I don't care what you did to get it. <laughs> and then, you know, when they kind of come out of like the monologue of like of all the technical aspects uh, and I cannot understand uh, what this thing is. Uh, I almost think that we should stop everything and turn around to go look at it. Uh, uh, have, you, have you blinked in a while? No, uh, uh, it's a, uh, Captain! Hey, uh, <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, there's something, there's something here you should see. Well, ki there's kind of something here. There's something that you should see this. <laughs> okay, can you send it to XO and I? We'll take a look. I'll reach over the lieutenant at this point and like <laughs> send it send it up and over to them. <laughs> you guys get this scan of the sky and it shows there's like a small fluctuation in this area that a Johnny like suspects something is and it's coming off of the um the spring satellite. And it is um I mean it, it, it appears to be something there. Uh let me get another test of both security test from both Myrtle and Wyatt. Wyatt, you get a plus two to this. Oof. See if you guys can figure out. You're, you're looking at this. Like, this is weird. Do I get to roll anything to see what if I, I just got twelve? What it is? It's not a type of security you're familiar with. Oh okay. <laughs> shit! Mm -hmm. Don't have the right dice. They're all the same color. That does not work. Yeah, that's, that's, no. mm -hmm. I, I, I've done that before, where I have like I need the all color die, and I forget. What, I forgot to have an all color die, so I say whichever one lands closest to me is the drama die. I like that. No. You roll 15. like two in one hand and then one on the other hand. I was gonna say I would just roll the other one far away, but then I, I would also. I, I roll. I roll two and I spit one out. Oh. Out of your mouth. Yeah, I can. Or my nose. I can do. I can do a nose roll. No. <laughs> oh, no. Like, I'm just saying I don't limit myself when I role play. Okay. Good. 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> we used to do that too. Just like roll it right yeah, off. Walk your yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, what, what'd you now, get? Why? Now I'd roll something and step on it. Twelve. Got twelve. Okay. Yeah, I got a, I got a, um, um, let's see, three, so that's 11. You want to burn fortune? 13, 14, 15, 16. 16, okay. Myrtle, what was your lowest die? What was your lowest number you got on any of the dice? Um, uh, two. Two, okay. Would you mind burning six fortune to bump one of those to a six? I can totally All bump right. my five to a six. Is no, I meant like, I meant bump the, I meant bump the, oh. uh, the two. Yeah, you have fortune, it's yeah. on the top of your sheet. It's like your hit point I can do slash. That. Uh, oh, luck. those numbers. Okay, yeah. I thought something else yeah. was the portion. Like, that sounds like a lot. No, it's actually, sense, it, but... your, your luck is a huge <laughs> ball of your hit points and you being able to push your luck. So yeah, it's it's all about pushing your luck as hard as you can. Fabulous. Ask, okay. uh, all right. Michael does a whole lecture about it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, so Merle, you, you, you go ahead and you start looking at this thing and you remember like intelligence reports from, from your time when your dad was in the military and you were younger and still kind of, you know, a fresh recruit on uh, preliminary elements of Martian stealth tech. And this looks like a reading of, of Martian stealth tech. All right. Um, I'm going to shoot a message over to Wyatt, just because I don't want to alarm anybody. <laughs> when you guys are kind of next to each other, approximately on off deck by yourselves. Yeah, it's just like, you know, hey, um, I recognize this. Do you recognize this? Or it looks like it's familiar. Now that you've pointed out, yes, it does. It really does look like... Uh what we're thinking here. I don't um, think it's something to worry about necessarily, but I don't think they're out to sabotage us. I mean, yeah, we're just like nobody, right? At this point, yeah. I mean, they're just keeping an eye on everybody. I would assume it's out this far. All right. Well, let's, um, let's just go ahead and, and I'll kind of do this out to everybody. Okay, we'll just kind of, everything's fine. We're just going to kind of watch and see what happens here. Um, if there's any kind of movement, I'll be sure to let anybody know if we're going to take off. If that's okay with you, Lou. Uh, uh, yes, uh, that is, um, my orders as well. 
Did you want to, did you want to tell Johnny that it's self tech? Do you think it's uh, self tech? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They told I'll you they it's self tech. Well, okay. Um, and that is probably the most fascinating thing that I've ever heard. So that's going to send a Johnny down like a little rabbit hole to research. Like, what does that mean for us? Can we interact with it? What do we know? And I feel like we do not know a lot. <laughs> yeah. It, so what it means is that like this thing absorbs the energy versus sending it back. So you have to use a pretty, I mean, at that range, this basically at this range, that satellite should be able to, like your little communication satellite should be able to count the number of rivets on the ship. <coughs> like really detailed information, but this thing, what it's doing, it's not pushing a lot of the information back. It's like it's you just, said, absorbing. I love that. Okay. Yeah. And so like, it's just absorbing all the energy that's going into it and you're, you're getting just kind of a blob back. Um, but it's a big blob. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, that's concerning. But, oh, it's fascinating. Uh, John, you do know one of the disadvantages of stealth tech though, is that once they fire up the engines, it gets, it's pretty easy to spot at that point. So they fire, if they're, if they're going to chase you, you're going to spot them pretty quick. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, they might be sitting there floating in the black. <clears throat> okay. All right. I'll, I'll make sure that uh, Zeddy and Mike uh, uh, Waxer are familiar, you know, like, hey, this is what's going on. This is what Wyatt and I know about stealth tech. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to rely on you guys to kind of help keep the calm with the rest of the crew in case we need to you know yeah just, like go to town there <laughs> i'll tell folks to start strapping in cross catches or yeah get everything ready okay yeah everybody's ready everybody's ready to jump in the crash couch anytime you want so yeah you can uh you go ahead and uh everybody's ready to go myrtle you're you can throttle whenever you want to um but what's okay. your what's uh, your current plan with it and do you want to let your co-pilot know what your plan is? <laughs> yeah, yeah uh mikhail yeah. mikhail's like what we do what we do cap Okay, so this is what I'm thinking, is that uh, we're going to go ahead and, like, take off and start heading towards this. Um, I don't want to go, like, at a blinding burst of speed where we're going to have to use up all our juice and all that. Oh, we got plenty. But, we're good, yeah. Yeah, we're good. But I don't want to just, like, throw us into a panic um, before we need to. But I, but I want it to be ready just in case something you, goes down. So How, how big of a... Of, of a uh acceleration do you want to do, do like a, do you mean do you want like, you've been cruising guys at like 0.3 g's which is pretty comfortable for everybody the belters are fine at that uh half a g is gonna be a little more is they can deal with it but it's a little comfortable one g is where the belters start kind of like they need they're gonna need the juice to stay awake yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna just kind of we're gonna slowly ramp up to half okay. right. half a g you know because i want everybody in so basically hey everybody this is your captain uh, let's get uh, butts in seats right now. We're going to take a little tour off the side and check something out. So I want you guys to be comfortable um, for our little journey here. And we'll, then we'll just get back to doing what we do best. Um, so if everybody could be ready, just, you know, just kind of give us a ping when you're all set. All right, I got my it. very calm. Don't want to stress <laughs> anybody out because some of these people <laughs> have PTSD really bad. So. <laughs> On um, this ship. Right. Um, I'm not Michael's is gonna freak out. Okay. I got, I got it. on uh on uh down below Waxer, you're down in the uh, machine shop with uh, uh the engineers and other people, the med uh, the med techs up in the uh med bay area. Um you have uh on the on the ops deck we have uh Zenny uh and Wyatt and a Johnny, and then up on the pilot's deck we have both uh Myrtle, and we have uh, the co-pilot Mikhail. Okay, so you guys, you guys, you guys are well staffed, no problem. Ship's actually uh, operating fine. Uh, Mikhail yes. punches in the orders, and he goes, "All right, is execute on on your command, Captain." All right, let's head out. You guys feel the ship push, um, <laughs> and uh, the belt is kind of feel it kicking a little bit here. It's not too bad. The, you hit the half G, it's not a problem. Uh, the juice will kick in. Uh, right now, it's set up for automation, so if your vital signs start kicking a certain way, it'll push the couch and, and kick in for you guys to uh, to adjust for your discomfort. Um, for our bones. Yes, this is, it, is, it is key. Uh, and also make sure you don't stroke out. Uh, <laughs> so, That's fair. But yeah, so you go, you, you, you start heading off that direction. And then are you heading directly at it, Myrtle, or do you want to head parallel to it, or how do you want to... I want to kind of do a little bit of a parallel move, so it doesn't look, so we don't look a, like we're threading... Curve? 
Oh please yeah, no, we are not an attack. Mm. <laughs> we're not we're not threatening. We're just kinda like okay. what's up? Fly casual. <laughs> All right, Fly so the, the ship starts coming up, and um, you get out about um, you get out about a quarter of a million clicks towards it. And um, Johnny, you're keeping the scanners on this thing. You've almost forgot like the satellites. You're like they'll be there when I get back. Because um, mm-hmm. this is whatever this is really interesting. It's some sort of anomaly. Oh my god, I am so enamored by this. Like, I am a belter that have spent like dedicated their whole life to like bettering um, other belters and improving communications for us so we can just live better lives. But to learn something new, like this, has the possibility of being something incredible. Yeah, so this super one hundred percent focused on the thing that we shouldn't be. You might say <laughs> you, you might you might say that we're on a precipice. <laughs> Alright, okay. Uh, As the name of the show! Alright. He said the name of the show! He said the thing. Alright. I see what you did there. Um, so, um, you, 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 start, you start cutting out there. Um, about, when you get about a quarter, uh, quarter way there, uh, Johnny, you're keeping scans on it, and the, the spring and then the Sinclair both confirm this, that whatever it is is starting to rotate. It's starting to kind of spin a little bit, and you can see, uh, what is easily identifiable as a drive plume pushing it, having it try to go away from uh, your direction, your flight mm-hmm. uh, plan. Um, and you can make another uh, scan test here. So this, if you, uh, since you're using both the ships, I'll give you a plus 12 on this okay. again. So roll the roll the tech test to see if you can figure out what this thing does. Yeah. Um, that is going to be a 26 again. Ooh, that's okay. a five. That's double. Uh, Dramatized. Very, two fives. Very yep. nice. Wait. So you, you're you're catching this as it's going. You're you're completely focused. You've like kind of done that thing where you kind of leave your body. Like I mean, it, it's not it's not too bad of pressure, but you're like you're like really into this. And so as the the ship's going, um, you kind of catch the drive the the drive setup on it. Um, the signature doesn't come back with any like identifiable ships. Like it's not like anything in the in the registries. Mm-hmm. But it does come up with um, something like similar, kind of comparable. It looks wow. like, uh, kind of reminds you of what's known as a Narlacar, a, a Narlacar class research vest- vessel. Oh, okay. And so this is like um, like a standard science vessel type situation, but mm-hmm. usually they're not stealth coded. No, um, it's expensive technology. It's very expensive technology. Research. But as far as the size of the vehicle and, and everything like that, this seems like it kind of matches uh, based on those things. And uh, it's more of a kind of a, a it's a, it look, the best way to describe the shape of it is like a cake with like rockets attached to the bottom of it. Like, yeah, so it's it's got this kind of, yeah, it's kind of got layers like that too, but it's a research vessel. They have full blown labs and everything and it even does have a shuttle bay on it. Uh, or they usually have shuttle bays on this one. You can't tell what, what it has on or anything like that mm-hmm. too, but you are definitely flying towards it and it's trying to it's now starting to it's, it's burn away from you. Can we, uh, can we hail it? You can, yeah, you want to, I mean, you, you have access to the comms here. I mean, hell, you installed them. You can, yeah. uh, you can try to hail them, yeah. All right. Uh, so you, you go up and hail them. Uh, Johnny, what do you, what do you want your message to say? <laughs> oh, um, this poor Johnny never did anything military in their life. Um, yeah. <laughs> which, you know, it really makes them feel at home in the OPA. Um, uh, uh greetings. We are just wondering, uh, are you trying to take our communication relay or do you just want to learn about communications? <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you all see a Johnny there talking uh, into like a camera and um, trying to, com- and, and Myrtle, you see an outgoing communication come from a Johnny to this this thing and uh, you get no response back from it. Uh, you, get, you wait about like 30 seconds or so, no response back. Um, signal clearly got there, the type beam connected with the uh with the ship easily um what do you uh what do you want to do uh Merle, you're you're gained on it because it's still accelerating um it's a yeah. much it's a much larger ship uh you're pretty sure that you could outrace it if you wanted to as far as its okay. size goes it's got like little baby thrusters you casually <laughs> uh, it's casually, casually much, outrace it <laughs> it's it's a it's a bit it's a bit bigger than than this ship okay. uh two for one thing so it's gonna take a little longer to accelerate but it is um yeah, it is getting ready to go. <laughs> um, well, I'm just going to kind of keep on keeping on until I need to change what I'm doing. Sure. Um, yeah, as far as the orders go, uh, you're pursuing it, trying to get closer to it. Um, you get within a, uh, about, 
half a half a million. Uh, yeah, no, you're getting pretty close to it. Actually, you're getting about within uh, two, uh, a quarter of a million kilometers to it, and it, it's uh, it's still trying to. You're still out racing it. You're still out pacing it. Um, you notice though that it's um, it seems to be uh, like something shifting about it. Um, all of a sudden, it starts to light up on the sensors a lot more. Like it's starting to like. I mean, you could, the sensors could pick it up no problem, but like parts of the ship that you hadn't, you couldn't really look at too easily, are now showing up suddenly. Like either like the like, like um, and a, and a Johnny, as far as you're concerned, or, or Wyatt and uh, Myrtle, like it's like you're guessing it is it like stripping, it's like stealth coating off, or like what the hell's going on? Uh, is it kind of showing us like um, what maybe it's capable of if we get too close? Um. The the sensors kick in uh, real quick. You take a look at the sensor at the sensor data that, that uh, Johnny's feeding to you, uh, Wyatt, and you don't see any weapons on it. But you're looking at it kind of closer, and it looks like the hangar bay on this thing's opening up. Oh no! No, bad. Uh-oh. I think we should uh, kind of slow our burn down and. Oh, but what is going out. to come out of it? Are we not curious? <laughs> I'm curious, <laughs> but know, I also don't want to be left. We could slow our roll a little bit. All right. You know, we don't want to just jump on in. Do you want to change, uh, uh, Mikhail asked, uh, Captain, do you want me to change the course to just go, uh, parallel to the thing? Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. All right. If you just touch it down just right. a tad to show that, like, match, hey. Match acceleration, I'm, match burn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah He's like, that he, he, he adjusted good. no problem. He's pretty about, good about that stuff. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, like, side eyeing, like, looking, looking at the lieutenant as, like, all of this is happening around them and they're not getting like, you know, they're in they're in charge. But like I want to I want to just like keep eyes on the lieutenant and see like how they're reacting and responding to everyone deferring to Myrtle for everything and mm-hmm. not even acknowledging that the lieutenant's here anymore. It's like they haven't really noticed. Um Almost like they were given a title that they are historically not prepared for. They're just a really big communications nerd. Uh, (laughs) Excellent. Great, great, good, great, great, great. So, like, (laughs) I think Zenny sees that and just, like, to themselves, like, just kind of leans on the the crash couch and, like, tries to really hide, like, a grin. (laughs) Um, yeah. But it's trying to also, like, get... Of more feed on this, oh, like sensors and feed into this, like sensor. sensor yeah, you, you saw that that uh, a Johnny's hail was unsuccessful. Though at the same time, also we'll say um, unprofessional. unprofessional. Yeah, no, no, nothing personal, <laughs> but it was unprofessional. Hundred uh, percent. Oh, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Johnny's one of these people that has a high rank in the military, probably because of their previous position uh, and their capabilities. Uh, mm. They wanted the signing bonus, but you, uh, but Myrtle and Wyatt, both of you actually have actual military experience. Uh, would either one of you want to try to hail them? Or is any even, I mean, you've talked some people down off the ledge. Um, I, I could go ahead and, um, uh, and, and try okay. from here. All right. What do you want to say to Myrtle? Um, hello out there. This is the OPA Navy ship, the Sinclair. We're just uh, checking on you, see how you're doing, if uh, things are all right out here in our space. You guys need anything out there? We're uh, happy to help, you know, because the belt helps everyone. You get a, about, uh, 30, about 20 seconds later, you get a response back saying, uh, OPAS Sinclair, uh, cease cease your uh, pursuit and return to the elliptical. Oh, the other side. That's it. That's it. And it's like it's like a digitized voice coming back that's not like recognizable, like it's been scrambled and stuff. Interesting. Um, hey, so you got uh, you got some experience with this sort of thing? Would I have any experience with something like this? happening i mean the tactics they're using and and zenny might know about the two and even myrtle and, and certainly johnny uh the uh this is a pirate tactic to like go unnoticed mm-hmm. but like this ain't a pirate <laughs> ship whatever the hell this kind of a ship uh mm-hmm. these um it could be stolen oh yeah yeah ship, a ship stolen like this would be would have been noticed uh this is ex- an extremely specific piece of gear usually they're privately owned too like uh or they're contracted out by the um, by the navies and such like that too. Okay. But like, the OPA has none of these. 
don't have any of this. They're they're honestly their best, their closest thing to this actually is the behemoth. That I'm actually. <laughs> I'm oh, um, oh. <laughs> it wasn't that big. It wasn't that big, but like it, it's just yeah. it's got the sense like of package and the, the gear. Equivalent, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Is there an LPA ship close to us, like uh, to maybe keep an eye on this if we decide? Uh, to... I mean, there's one that could be here in probably like three days. Hmm, that's pretty close. good. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> really we, curious why they're so out we, here we, hiding like this. We don't think there's any weapons out here, right? We scanned it. We couldn't find any weapons. Uh, yeah, I mean, ship, like, a, ship, a standard any. version of this ship does not have any weapons. They don't even have PDCs on them. But We've do... already established this as a standard version of this yeah, ship. It's, true. Yes. <laughs> it's invisible. <laughs> yeah, their hangar is open. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Uh, so they could deploy something that might have some guns. So yeah, so that's actually the next thing. Is it comes, you get another com as you guys are kind of debating the stats this thing. You get everything saying, Sinclair, uh, you have uh, one minute. Uh, from uh, the, you're receiving this broadcast to stand down and break pursuit, or you uh, you will be uh, destroyed. Wow. Do I recognize what accent this person? I mean, it's it's, it's all just scramble. different, right? It's uh, coming through I, scramble. I, I unscramble that. Yeah. It's a communications. Okay. Okay. It's a tight beam. I should right. be able to have some control. Yeah. You, you try. You go through and you try to like unscramble the voice and like run through the Sinclair systems. Um, I mean, you can get kind of a better version of the voice, but it's not 100. percent um, mm-hmm. But it's it's it sounds it sounds earther, uh, uh, and their diction is earther. Uh, they're much more formal. They're uh, Martians tend to like want to identify. You just back off or identify themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let you know that you're about to get your ass handed to you. But like mm-hmm. uh, these guys are just like they're not identifying themselves or anything like that. I don't know what these guys are up to, but I don't think we should push the button and see what happens. I don't think it's worth losing our ship in the middle. I gotta flash uh, over to another scene real quick. Wax are you and McMichael yeah. are strapped in facing each other and McMichael goes, Hey man, what do you think is going on up there? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Uh we keep going fast, we slow down. That's I mean what I was like, thinking. Yeah, Stencil picked up something though. I, I heard uh yeah, the spring, you know? Yeah, he goes we, he, we he like some... yelled he yelled like down the uh down the shaft with Hey Justine! What are they doing up there? And you can hear Justine. She's like, I don't know, man. They they have nothing go fast. I was making I was making sure they go as fast as they want to go. He's I, like, I bet ah. you, yeah, I bet you we're gonna go cap t- ca- capture the signal, or go towards it. But uh, I don't know. Nobody, you, should we um, should we send a signal? Uh, uh, ask above and say say what's going on. I, mean, I heard. You, I, McMichael was like, I don't know, man. That that lieutenant don't like me, man. Shit, I don't want to. I don't yeah. mess with them. Yeah, take that uh, vet pen out of your mouth, man. But it, but it calms me down, man. <laughs> try breathing. Try breathing. Ah. Uh, yeah, um, right. I'll send. A, I'll send like a message up, Jack, just to see. Uh, you yeah, know. You, hey, you, yeah. I'll, you get, you get a message from Waxar going like, you know. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. Seti, what's uh, going on up there? Can you give us? Uh, everybody's. Uh, this. You know, McMichael's. He's starting to freak out again. <clears throat> oh shit. Uh. Uh. Yeah, um, I'll try to do it, like, quietly while everybody is, like, preoccupied with stuff. I'll be like, uh, yeah, Waxer, um, so apparently there's some Earthers who have some sort of Martian stealth tech technology, (laughs) and it might be actually, uh, pretty bad, so you tell McMichaels whatever you want, because it, uh, it it doesn't seem too good, um, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll be, uh, we'll probably be suiting up, you think we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, intercept? Uh, 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 I hope not. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll, you... I'll look at McMichaels and I'll just be like, uh, eh, signal fluke, you know, nothing big. Uh, you might as well take a five. Uh, <laughs> so, Myrtle, uh, you're the captain of the ship, uh, but Johnny's in charge of the mission and has diverted the, the resources for the mission. Uh, you are, though, the one piloting the ship, and, and uh, Mikhail's next to you. Do you want to either keep the ship? Uh, going towards it, or uh, or do you want to have it like go back to the elliptical and take care of the satellites? Um, I'm gonna a minute kind of make. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna back off a little bit. Okay. Uh, John, you can see the, a bit. You, you can see the Sinclair starting to pull away, mm-hmm. uh, based on the reading. So, actually, uh, do you have anything to say about that, or do you want to disagree uh, with the captain or? Uh, uh, uh Captain, ask uh, what's uh, are we not going to face them? Uh, they've only threatened uh, the entire ship, but there's nothing we cannot face, is it not? Well, 
one of the things that we've learned out here is that things can surprise you. Hmm. And with their with their uh, with their bay open, I'm not really sure what might actually come out of it. Ah, you are I mean, correct. it's up to you because you're the boss. But uh, it is up to you me. Know, but um, uh, if I you just... want us to continue, then we can continue. But if it looks like the you know of if it gets to the point of I'm going to lose my crew, you know, screw your orders. I, that's just just gonna flat out say that. I mean, you're stuck out here with us, so oh, uh, yeah. I, that's, I that's the way it is. If you want to investigate a little more, we can do that. We can talk to them. Maybe you want to talk to them. Um, I can kind of lay on some of my earther talk and see if that helps. But um, mm -hmm. but I, I tell you, I'm not sacrificing my crew, my family, for whatever kind of thing that you want to do out here. I understand. I I just I have to know if they are if they possess the, the technology that our communications cannot even reflect. I, I just I have to know. They might possess the research that could help us with our communications. Well, oh. you know, you could put on a suit and go towards it if you wanted. Mikhail says fifteen seconds. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the time's kind of guys. Uh, we're about out of time. We need to. Well, we to no, I, I'm I'm good here. Thank you. 11. So what does that mean? Do you want us to stay or do you want us to go? And ah. I think we should stay. Nine. All right. Uh, I'm going to just hit the button. Everybody hold on to your butts because we might have to do a maneuver. You you come up, you hit the acceleration. Uh, you go into more of an attack speed closer to 1G. Uh, the belters are starting to like kind of, you're starting to push it. You guys can hold on. Juice hasn't kicked in yet, but you're, you're holding on. Um, Johnny, you're watching this sensor package also to uh, something comes out of the bay. Oh, okay. Uh, and it comes back with readings of ship and such. Uh, it doesn't, it's not identified uh, in anything like that too, but it does come back looking at with an approximation of, uh, it actually looks almost like a, um, like an attack ship, like a small attack uh, fighter, not, not a fighter ship, but like a very small uh, destroyer type ship. Not destroyer, okay. it's, not that, it's not that big. Right. Um, it's an attack ship, I'll say that. Okay. And it has weapons deployed as it comes out, PC network, and uh, you're guessing probably has torpedo capabilities if it's going out that fast. And it is it is smaller and faster than your guys' ship. Wyatt, you're on this. <laughs> <laughs> I say let's have everything ready, but I still don't think we should be uh, tempting fate here. All right. PC networks deploy on the Sinclair, goes into defensive. Uh, everybody's like, oh, battle lighting comes on and everything. Um, the... Uh, yeah, uh, this thing comes speeding at you. Uh, the one, the ship that it came out of starts speeding off away from it, and it looks like this ship's going to intercept, uh, attempt to intercept you while the other one gets, the bigger one gets away. Um, it's a smaller ship. It crews maybe like four people. Not a very big ship. It's not something that can go off by itself for a very long time. Um, but it definitely has PDCs, uh, and it comes back um, with some, uh, yeah, it definitely has some capabilities here. Okay. All right. I... Because let's be real, Johnny, uh, whether or not they fully realize the, the severity of the situation, which sucks. Um, <laughs> I, the communication was established. They responded to us. So, like, we have that tight beam. Can I? And this is me trying to, because um, this is very, very, like, very, like, literal and real mm -hmm. technology. So, like, can I not use that connection to access something. Are you going to try to hack their ship? Yeah. yeah. Um, get, it, get it, get it, get it, get it. At this, it. At this distance, they would, because like there's the communication delay, mm -hmm. they would cut you off before you would get anything through. You have to be pretty close to start trying to hack a ship. Yeah. yeah. It takes a lot, actually. They, there's the light delay issue. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, this one's coming at you pretty fast. Uh, you guys would probably be within proximity to each other, like combat range, basically, within like the next like three minutes. Um, so um, as you guys as you guys are going, uh, a communi Zenia, a communication comes in from the from actually the the main ship. Uh, there's a little video package that comes in. Uh, do you want to put it up on screen, or what do you want to do with that, Zenny? Um, I I'll I'll pull like it up like just a, for 
And it's not just like on a, mine for now, like, and then I'll, I'll send it to the the captain if it's, it's not like, like a, it's not like a full blown like like it looks like someone sent you a video file. It isn't like a communications like formal thing. It's just yeah. like, a, like someone recorded something on their, on their data pad to send to you. Is what it, what it comes as the package. Yeah, I'll 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 pull it up uh, on my station first. Um, because I know that they're right. worrying about other things right now. <laughs> you you see like this like kind of unclear video of it kind of stumbling around like it's like you know someone like basically the data pack kind of moving around like while the things moving and everything, and you can uh -huh. see some very clean looking walls. Uh, what looks to be like brand new gear. Uh, looks kind of like someone's maybe like uh, crew quarter or something like that too. And this face comes on, uh, that like is actually familiar to you. And it's this Earther named Yakiv Butenko. I was gonna guess that this was that asshole's ship. <laughs> well, yeah. I was in my head. I was like, it's gonna be this, this, this. I. Yeah, it just be, and, and for context, be uh, you can't, Yakiv is not the asshole. Um, no, it's not. It's the person that Yakiv like, happens to be with who is on this like, ship, and this like, is bad. <laughs> he's like, you, you need. To, he, he's like, the like, you need to stay away from them. They'll, they'll kill you. They'll kill you. They're gonna. He needs to stay away. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Pope, Pope's fine. Just leave him alone, okay? And he's like, I, I, I thought I can get out, and like the thing just cuts off. Uh, as soon as it, as soon as it stops, I just yell up to the captain and I say, Captain, that's Yakiv on that ship. That's Pope. Shit. <laughs> All right, I, I, I'll, I'll just like, hey, let's back off right now. Okay. Mikhail starts breaking up thing. And he, the, the ship goes, the goes into a hard flip. Uh, everybody needs to make a stamina test. Oh, God. So, uh, I felt, felt my stomach do a, do a barrel <laughs> Okay, so, uh, the, uh, go ahead and roll, um, this will be constitution, so you get a plus one on this. Okay. This is not your friend. No, it is not. Oh, no. Oh, I got doubles. Double sixes. Yes. Okay, no, that's good. Hand total? Yeah, let me get a total from you, B, to start with you. For, oh, uh, uh, 10 total, 3 on the uh, fun dice. Okay. You, you got double <laughs> sticks and you got 10 total? Yes! Oh double yeah, sticks. I gotta tell you that too. Oh my god. Mm. Yes, you know, double you, sixes. You got, you got a 10 total on double sticks? Double sticks would be a 12 minimum. I'm doing fine tonight. <laughs> add, addable, add All right. This we is, this it. is, okay. that's, that's from 15. 15. Yeah, you're good. Plus 1, so 16, you're good. Okay. Uh, what'd you get, Zenny? Um, I had to spend some fortune, but, uh, because it was bad. Um, uh, fifth, 16. 16, okay. You're good. Why, what'd you get? 13. 13, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, Myrtle? 16. You're good. And then Waxer? 15, two fives, 15, five on the right. drama. Uh, why nice. you take a whopping, uh, seven points of fortune damage as the G's mm -hmm. kind of start pushing you a little bit. Uh, at least you weren't you, shot this time. Yeah, at least you weren't yeah. shot, yeah. That's yeah. true. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Like, <sighs> the, the G's kind of throw you around a little bit as, as Mikhail throws it around. Uh, you can hear, uh, you hear down, downstairs uh, the med tech going, uh, hey, Justine passed out, guys. And like, oh. um, I'll get to her and you hear the med tech, like he's going to detach, try to go for her, to make sure she wakes up and everything like that too. Um, <laughs> just kind of need your engineer. That's why you hired her. <laughs> um, yeah, um, this is why so, we hired our med tech. <laughs> yeah, this is why you hired med tech. All good investments. Yeah, you know we thought. Um, so uh, you guys flip and burn and start heading out from it. The ship is in pursuit. Uh, it looks like it could actually catch you if it wanted to. Um, do you want to? Uh, but it's not within torpedo range to uh, really deploy anything against you. If it, torpedoes could probably catch you and never leave, but it would be kind of a. Uh, long burn. You'd have a long time before they catch you. So what do you guys want to do? Um, I, I think we just it? keep going. We just go back yeah. to where we were. We're just gonna, we're just gonna leave off. You, you start burning out uh, a little bit harder. You push the burn up to a 2G burn. Um, goes for a little bit, about an hour. I need everyone, uh, everyone who's not, I, actually I only need the belters to make this one. <laughs> oh, great. Good, good. Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah, same thing yeah. again, yeah. Oh, God, I'm probably going to spend some fortune. All right. This time I promise I'll add up all the dice. Oh, yeah. yeah don't roll play, high, don't play roll on hard high. mode. <laughs> oh, bad. Bad for you me. Can do what it. What did you get, Wacker? Uh, I got a two, five, nine. Nine? Do you want to bring oh, fortune? Oh, buddy. Or do you want to yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll burn fortune. Uh, my okay, lowest was a one. You need to get a. Uh, you need to get a thirteen on this. 
Okay, so... so, you, so you four portion, you're good. Okay, oh, you get, yeah, let's do that. Uh, 15 double fives. You're good, yeah, you hold it together, and then oh, what'd you get for uh, this, uh, Johnny? Uh, 14 to three on the fun die. And what, and what was your lowest number on any of those with three? A three. Okay, uh, so you'll, you're gonna burn four fortune to get to that to a four, and okay. that will keep you uh, without any more damage. Okay, so yeah, so you guys all you guys all kind of hold together, and the rest of the crew does. The med tech's like, I got Justine back on board, um, and he like he's like, I'm strapping in right now. I'm I'm keeping an eye on her on her vitals, and uh, everybody keeps on going. Uh, the ship eventually breaks pursuit. You uh, you got the Sinclair did throw target locks on there, but they didn't fire any torpedoes. Uh, but they did target lock for a brief moment. Come back into the elliptical uh, where the sat uh, uh, a few million clicks from where the satellites are. You have to go go back to the find, make sure you can still find this, the spring. Uh, you have it on the, the nav charge, no problem. Uh, but the the ship that was uh, doing it, it just flipped and burned back out into the black. Um, do you guys want to track it, or uh, what do you want to do with that? I think we should track. Yeah, we just keep an eye on yeah. it at all times. Yeah, we should just keep an eye on it. Uh, he- if I could ask crew, uh, is this uh, is this a ship that you are familiar with? Uh, what is the story there? Ask Michaels. <laughs> Looks <laughs> meaningfully yeah. to everybody who's, you know, in this space. <laughs> it's, it's a long story. This guy's dangerous, and he's somebody we would like to take care of, but he's got a lot more capabilities. Um, I'm going to have, I'm actually going to have a Johnny make a current affairs test. Uh, Johnny, roll, uh, add, uh, roll the dice and add five to it. Let's see if you know this name they dropped. That's really fun. Yeah, that's a good one. Current affairs is like it's actually called the metagaming skill. It's it, lets so you, good. It, it like lets you know about like stuff. About <laughs> yeah. about. Uh, that's nice. Um, double fours. Look good. Okay. Uh, four. One of the yeah, four on the drama dice. Uh, four on the dice. Uh, for a total of nine plus what was it again? Five. Right, so okay, Five. that's a good number. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, you you this name Pope popped up and uh this, this is there is this industri- kind of like uh he was a rival of Jules Pierre Mao. He was a rival mm-hmm. of like of, of Mal Quick. Uh, he had a thing called Pope Sanchez Shipping, and he died like th- two, three years ago. And you you worked for him once on Titan. He had like a whole estate on Titan. He used to come out to Titan all the time. Um, nice Earther. He paid well. Uh, was really mm-hmm. interested in like cryogenic and in, in space travel. Trying to do. Um, he actually had one of the bids to the Mormons for the the Navu before they agreed on Navu. Yeah. He's gonna freeze a bunch of Mormons and send them off to space. <laughs> They were asking for it, guys. That's what they wanted. Yeah. Um, so, like, uh, yes. I mean, they told me to. And, uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, so he that's kind of who this guy is, uh, okay. who they're mentioning. But now they seem all afraid of this guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, by the way, like as soon as I'm not in 2G. Uh, oh, yeah, you you I'm guys gonna, pull back on it, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm going to start taking the footage that Buteko sent mm-hmm. and um, like scrubbing it for any little tiny detail that I can see about like anything inside the mate that main ship basically like t- taking it apart piece by piece mm-hmm. in you, like you yeah know. You, you throw it into the into the Sinclair's AI and it starts picking it apart uh trying to like recreate the room in like a 3d element of what it can mm-hmm. and then yeah. also you kind of cross-reference that with like this ship design like relative to what that ship is so it might have give some sort of baseline for it it'll take it probably yeah. like uh a few hours for it to do all that but yeah, um, it can yeah. it can render something up for you. This is a little bit more akin to your kind of uh, computer yeah. usage. You've been hundred percent. Yeah, 100%. reconstructing crime scenes really yes. does kind of like mesh with this pretty well. Plus, like I did research on like Butenko and like his stuff, his family stuff with like the ships and everything. So like if this all this, makes sense. This could be the ship that his family built. That's the major. That's, that's what. That's you know. where me and Zenny are like right there now. Okay. <laughs> with like this is the ship. This is the ship that Pope built, <laughs> and this is Botenko is in a in an interesting place now. <laughs> right, um, and then Johnny, you track the ship for a while, and eventually it goes dark. Um, you're tracking it on mm. the scopes as best you can, but it's yep. it was moving so it's moving pretty fast, um, and eventually you see it kind of like just disappear into the black. You're guessing it either linked back up with the other ship or whatever it is, but mm-hmm. uh, it was able to nimbly. Uh, get back where it was going quite easily. Okay. Well, that is a concern. Um, the biggest concern is why were they out here? What are they watching? What are they looking for? Oh, I was hoping you could answer that. And if not, that... Uh, they, hmm. Michael's kind of comes up to the up to the, the opsec after they kind of calm down and he overhears you why he goes, it's the ring, man. Everybody wants the ring. 
Yeah. Why wouldn't they come out here? Yeah, but I don't trust that guy. There's something. There's definitely some nefarious stuff going on with them. Well, yeah, Butenko was saying that the that wasn't Pope working on. I mean, Pope in the past he's been working on cryogenics and stuff. And then uh, that I all the way I hear and, and has a yeah has this giant research ship and everything. Like I don't. I mean, he might be going to. Is he trying to go anywhere like past it? Yeah, I bet. He's gonna want to get close to that ring as he possibly can without getting shot. I mean, you know, I mean, he's just gonna, you know, if you can own something just to own something, I think that that's, he's gonna want to own this ring or whatever it is. And then, you know, people are gonna have to pay him, you know, research fees and whatever they want to set up kind of programs, you know, and you know, you know, that there's going to be some earthers that are going to want to be tourists out here. Right. Yeah. And so oh, oh, he yes. might want to set up that kind of thing. It's like, ooh, come Wait, look at well, this ring. Well, here's a here's a here's a, something to think too. Um, he has Martian stealth technology, which yeah, means he has connections with either mm-hmm. either Mars or someone who can get a hold of that. Yeah, he's very and wealthy that, too. Yeah. That seems like money. it's a bad. It, it, that seems like it's a bad combination if someone is wanting to be in charge of something as big as the ring or at least getting to the ring and also has connections with both earth and mars that's gonna be bad for the belt yeah i mean i can't even think uh, you know i can't it, i can't even imagine that mars would go into especially with with an earther of of trying to you know have a deal together of some sort no, I, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm we wonder- all know that there's shady shit that happens, right? But to be so bold about it, well, it's why it. What's the? What are the odds that something <clears throat> like in in bits and pieces? What are the odds that someone would get away with taking taking stuff like that off of out of either Mars or some other some other ship or something so, like that? So why you do know that like the stealth composite basically comes in like tubes. I mean, it's just, it's just a composite material you can spread over a surface or reshape to, it's not like, I mean, it would be, it would be like a barrel falling off a truck. <laughs> it wouldn't be that hard to get, but you'd think they'd notice it after a while. It is a lot of it. I will say that that, that ship is pretty good size. I yeah. mean, you say somebody would have noticed, but if they are paid off or they have certain connections, then well. They're, they're too busy, you know, watching to see what's happened with this ring, so. Mm-hmm. Michael's chimes in, <laughs> and he goes, "Yo, man, I read, I read on that forum. They say the Earth has got stealth tech too. I'm just saying. Why don't you go back downstairs and try to build us some stealth tech? <laughs> uh, I, I don't. I want to give Justine and the med tech privacy, man. She she didn't she didn't feel too good. She I don't I don't want her. You know, she got kind of con- conscious when she peeked in front of me. Uh, you should read some manuals and not those forums. Their spelling is atrocious. It's, it's <laughs> unacceptable, really. I uh, know. Nah, they, they spell like true Bethaloda. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I kind of put my hand on McMichael's, like, you know, I'll, I'll kinda, like, pull them back a little bit. <laughs> nah, man. Uh, he's, uh, all right. I'm going to go, yeah, go back I t- down. I think you give him, yeah. He yeah. goes down to the galley. He's just, he only goes down two decks at the galley and just chills out. Uh, I'm going to send out a little message over to Wyatt and just, like, you know, I mean, neither one of us are poster children for our planets at this point. Um, but can you imagine, you know, Earthers working with Martians for this kind of thing? At this point, I think anything's possible. What's um? Let, let me get a. Let me get a. I know. I know. Uh, Myrtle has the high current affairs. So to be clear, the the Tycho Corporation donates a lot of money to Martian politicians to keep Tycho Station independent. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, as far as Pope goes, I mean, he's not tied up with the UN or anything like that, too. He's privately operating. It was privately built. Because right. people thought that he was dead. That he was dead, yeah. <laughs> That's that, the that thing. That is true. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's that... Um, I think that... Uh, you know, we should probably share some of the stuff that we know about our homes and the politics and stuff with uh, Waxer and Zenny. You know, so that will help fill some blanks in, you know, around Pope and, and what's happening here. Yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah. 
Um, you guys get back to the elliptical. Uh, it doesn't take much time, and you're back to where the spring is to get it recalibrated and everything, too. Uh, it, it's a little bit discombobulated from being, like, fun around and changing, repurposed temporarily. Um, it's going to take you a little while for it all to run to Johnny. Um, you, Keep you know, busy. looking back at that original blip, uh, something about it just doesn't sit right with you. Sit right about it. It's a weird, like, why would they even ping this thing if they didn't want to be discovered? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why even reach out? Why reach out and touch someone via, via a telecommunication satellite? Sorry for the reference, guys. Uh, <laughs> but uh, why, why even do that uh, to risk being discovered as they were, apparently? Maybe they want to see how secure it is, see if they can take it over and use it for their own. That's the valid I mean, Once we're gone, we're not, it's not like we're going to be patrolling this area. On these satellites every day. Yeah, maybe they're testing it before we set it up. Not um, that we have to finish setting it up. It but wouldn't they complete. wait? That's but wouldn't true. they wait for us to leave before they did that? Yeah. Not that they can outgun us. Mm-hmm. Well, I think now that they know who we are and where we are, I think that that might give them more things to think about. Mm-hmm. I I, I don't know. It's um. Well, they were still, they were pushing farther away from this place Mm -hmm. before we got there. Mm -hmm. So, if they're not, if they're not, uh, if they're not coming this direction, they're going farther out. We should probably finish deploying the rest of them satellites then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, yes, that is my plan. Then we get a better uh, sense array wherever they go, but uh, yeah, that's not good. Yeah, I mean, Michael's going to chime with his one good piece of wisdom. He's like, yeah, he's like, he looks at Waxer. He's like, yeah, finishing the job ain't a bad idea. Yeah, once we set up all of them, yeah, we can get a better read on on everything. But uh, right now we only got two up. Yeah, and they t- maybe they are testing it, testing our, our systems. And where, yeah. yeah. If they get beyond where we can put the last satellite, the rest of the satellite, maybe we can't see where they be. Uh, Danny, you get a your intuition. I'm not gonna have you roll it, but your intuition about that that initial uh, data set that kind of had the issue in it, just like something about it, just feels weird to you. <laughs> Sit right, like why would they? You, know, you mean the 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 second diagnostic that yeah, I ran for ran, sure on it, purpose? It, it, it popped that one thing up. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it'd be like because the to, first one you. To, to make sure that I'm here, you're right. The first one, mm-hmm. the first diagnostic scan was fine. Green lights, mm-hmm. perfectly fine all around. Okay. And you put it outside the ship to use it and ran another diagnostic on it. Yeah. And then that came back with like a weird little thing on it. But to you, it feels okay. like, it feels like these guys are trying to hide in the shadows and then someone on like, or they for some reason decided to flash a mirror in your eye and then put it back away. And it's like, why would you do that? Like. Like one person had done it in time. So yeah, like maybe, one yeah. person, like a Yaki Bukenko, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, but no, yeah. I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, do. Hmm. I'm gonna. I want to. Uh, let me. See, I want to scr- do two things. One, I want to do another um, diagnosis scan. But while it's doing that, I'm gonna re- reread the mm. previous <laughs> one to kind of see if I can glean anything anything else from it with my limited knowledge um and then see if another diagnostic will um will pop out any other information you go back and look at the first diagnostic and the data set it had um and actually you know what i want to do i want to call uh drax up to see if he has any because he's got a bit more a bit more yeah, you guys knowledge can, about like this he goes sort up of stuff. and he goes up and he sits at the opposite and he goes, "Hey, it's a lot of good time." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was a good like, time. That, like, good. that was a great time back there when we went through two G together. That was a really yeah, good time. Yeah, no, he's, he's <laughs> like, I, mean, we, I guess that's what we signed up for. Uh, he's like looking at it. And he goes, "Yeah, this is a weird. Like, I mean, I read diagnostics like this off of you know, com setups all the time, but like back on series, but this is weird. I, it's, what is he even trying to show?" And he's kind of looking through it. And he's like, "It's got well, this weird also, pattern." Er- Right, because it, it when we first, when we did the first one, I'll pull up like the first diagnostic. It, everything was everything was normal, and then like I'll pull up exactly where like the oh. the you know to compare the two sections that are supposed to be the same. 
you know, let's try running this through like a different like program maybe maybe that'll bring something up maybe we're just using like looking at this the wrong way because we're trying to look at like a diagnostic right maybe someone inserted i'm gonna try to there. open it like an image i'm trying to make it into okay. kind of like how you can make like sa- like certain sound wave yeah. like waveforms can be turned into an image so it, i'm gonna try to up... do that sort of thing i, I want to do it three different ways images i want to do it as a sound and i want to try to do it as like a uh like a translated like if it's you know, if it's like in a binary, not like literally binary, but like yeah. translate it from one thing to another so thing. It, it comes back, uh, the image actually works. Uh, <sighs> and, and the data set comes up and you and Drax are looking at a photo, probably the first decently clear photo. It's kind of a photo, it looks like this guy Sebastian Pope. Uh, he's wearing like nice clothes for like a space travel type thing. But the weird, and Drax is like, what the fuck is that? Looking at it. And the guy like left arm is like, it, it's like encased in like what looks to it, it kind of reminds you of you've seen them from Earth like you've seen photos of them of like the limb regrowth like uh, kind of like uh, capsules and everything right but like it's uh, it's not like uh, translucent it's completely opaque it's a big like white kind of like like a metallic like almost sarcophagus over his like left arm but he seems to be able to operate it seems to, like just be supported on his shoulder um and everything too, and, and he's like, what, the f- "What is going on here?" And it looks like he's just hanging out, like, uh, like in a in like a basic lab. You can't really make it. There's no screens or anything like that too, but it looks like a lab setup. You can see like you know the centrifuges and diagnostic machine, a lot of advanced stuff you'd expect in a, in a lab. But like he's just sitting there talking. But it looks like whoever was on there sent you like try to like throw an image into the satellite and to to verify Pope and what he looks like right now. Huh. Max is like, what? The? He's, and he's looking, he's just trying, he's like, get the, he's like, hey, get um, like, let's get the med tech up here. Like, maybe they know what yeah. the hell that is. Like, uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just over, here. over, over comms. I'll just, I'll just ping, uh, hey, Marie, uh, get on, get on up to the, to the yeah, bridge. He, he's like, you got it, then he comes up and he goes, yeah, he's all, uh, case, uh, case, and, he, and like, and like, Drax, like, yeah, what do you, what is this thing? And he looks at it, he's like, like a limb regrowth chamber. I've never seen one like that though. Usually you can. Well, it's you can, huge. Well, yeah. He's like usually you're only doing like a portion of the arm at a time. We, you buff them out to for the extension of the limb, but like, and you want to be able to see it unless it has some sort of interface you can see it. But they don't. Usually you, you want to be able to monitor it so you don't have to take like open it up or run diagnostics on it. But do you think that? Do you think that he's not growing a limb in there? Oh, the hell you keep something like that on it's gotta be heavy as hell i mean he's like he's like i don't think limb regrowth is a fashionable thing on earth they're weird but they ain't that weird um if if i'm recalling what everyone has told me about well actually no you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna grab grab the the image mm-hmm. uh and i'm gonna just like i'm gonna stay stand up and physically walk over to where Myrtle and Wyatt okay. are, and like ping Waxer to get his ass up here. Yeah, go. <laughs> get the senior staff. Um, are you leaving a Johnny yeah, yeah. out? <laughs> I, I, I think here's what here's what happens. I like walk past a Johnny, and I'm just like, you want to know what this pop figure is, right? Uh, we absolutely, mom. I do. I just like gesture and like okay. head up to the the upper the okay. upper. Uh, yeah, you're on the off deck. deck. Yeah. 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 Uh, what you find? Uh, what you find? I'll. I'll I'll get send that image out to whatever the largest screen is up okay. here. Yeah, there's a big, there's like and, a big over like op- operational screen. Yeah. Yeah. This was that that signal, the signal that we found in the, in the um, the satellite, the one that the one that popped up that image that error. Yeah. I think it was Butenko trying to send us. Oh yeah. Send us he... this. But this is he. I'm gonna point to like where the the arm thing was. Yeah, you guys can't miss this? it. Did no. he have this when when you all saw him last time? Ah uh, putain, the merde, that's ugly. No. Did he have an arm the last time you saw him? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, a regular old arm. Does the technology ring anything for Waxer? Does it like strike? Is there any kind of weird... You, you see limb regrowth technology before on yeah. Ganymede. I mean, it reminds you a lot of that. But this one's like, it's mm-hmm. like the whole arm is encased, almost. Mm-hmm. 
versus like being like like he couldn't if he if it if it's a whole arm he's regrowing it looks weird because it kind of like you can see up to here but below here you're not sure how much of an arm he has in there but it looks like it can hold the whole length of an arm yeah he gonna he gonna have bigger arms than waxer <laughs> <laughs> and that thing yeah uh <clears throat> couldn't he been contaminated and chopped his arm off that's what I was thinking. Is either maybe he, because because he was, he was messing with that that weird stuff, right? It that weird blue stuff. Yeah. You think uh, Yakiva he'd be in danger? That uh, maybe they reveal the position and uh, what if Pope figures out uh, Yakiva bounce a signal to let us I know mean, they're there? He's in a lot of trouble if if. Yeah, Akiva's in trouble as soon as he decided to work with Pope. It's a problem. Yeah, yeah. he he warning us on something by, uh, by doing that. He but if us. but if that if that thing is over his arm, and he had an arm, uh, when at I least before for him, he had two arms. Right. Um, well, that's all right. Get a whole collection. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe he used maybe he using a uh, proto proto uh, molecule technology. Yeah, or maybe he he's trying something. to enhance himself with it. You don't actually yeah. believe that? What? No. He's really? crazy enough to try it. Yeah, what? maybe and maybe he trying to do that. To, I have to ask a question. You know, is, is McMichael's allowed on the object right now? I mean, I didn't invite him, but like, I'm. Uh, I feel like he just cruise up. Yeah, I feel like he would just show up. up. He's just yeah. like an audience. Go, man, it was here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, I got things to he, say, so I'm yeah. just gonna invite myself. <laughs> yeah, he goes, he goes, yo, man, maybe, maybe he'd be like that blue thing we saw on Ganymede. Yeah. Try to make himself one of those things. Yeah, I mean, if you exactly. you would, if a cap and you all telling uh, me that uh, he he used to use uh, cryogenic maybe to travel fast, maybe he using this other technology. To get him past the ring, yeah, make him make his body strong like what they did to Waxa, you know, uh, ch- change it, yeah. That's so Johnny, strong? this is the first you've heard of, of Waxer being altered genetically. <laughs> yeah, and like also they made him strong. What? Where? The Waxer's over here. Yeah, right. Waxer's, like, oh, yeah, Waxer's, oh. Waxer's huge. Oh. Waxer's, Waxer's humongous. Oh, <laughs> I may not okay. look huge on the camera, but no, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. That in the... <laughs> yeah, he's like he's like a well. I mean, like Waxer's usually sitting down, but like it was he's given like given to me in huge. meters, and I have no reference for what. 2.4 oh. meters was that's what the eight was afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. That yeah. clears it up. Thank you. <laughs> he's, he's a big uh, boy. Yeah. He's, he's like boy, twice yeah. as tall as me. Yeah. So. <laughs> but yeah, he's, and that's okay. But yeah, it, it seems like. Yeah, so, I, I mean, Michael's a look at. He sees this image too, and he's like, "Why? Why has he got a coffin on his arm?" I know. Who does that? Yeah. Someone who wants something to be kept there. I don't yeah, think I mean, he's. Like I don't think he's regrowing anything. Uh, if anything, I think he is growing something under there, but it's not an arm. Yeah, maybe he's trying to be like uh, the thing we saw on Ganymede. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm going with. That that any points to wax or any little thing? We yeah. don't know, man. <laughs> wait, hey, where'd you come from? But wait. <laughs> oh, all right. But if that's if that's something that he has on his ship, and if the cryo wasn't for long-term space travel, if it was to keep something like that contained. Maybe he was testing, yeah, on Delta's, uh, home. yeah. Johnny, this actually ah! goes very nicely they to are your... looking... Okay, yes, yes, yes. To your, to your knowledge. So you're, you, you mostly worked on Titan, and um, you were definitely somewhat uh, familiar with the uh, project on Phoebe, which is where the mm. protomolecule came from, as yep. everyone knew. And Phoebe was a ball of ice with a weird orbit. This guy is an expert on cryogenics. Things are starting to click for you. Maybe he figured that, I mean, this thing was, that protomolecule supposedly was frozen for like 2.5 billion years. Yep. Maybe he figured out a way, maybe he froze a damn thing. Hmm. Maybe he's carrying um, just his own private Phoebe on his, ar- as, as his arm. Uh, could I drop the suggestion that, um, <clears throat> As we all know, he has a lot of um, a lot of money, a lot of power, and um, his influence on Phoebe with the proto molecule that might have that, that everything you are suggesting might actually be true. Uh, this is awful. This is terrible. Um, I don't know if I am prepared for the role of uh, lieutenant. Um, I'm just going to share that with all of you right now. Um, uh, 
So, uh, Myrtle, um, you know what? You are fine. You are fine. You're doing such a good job. Hey, merci. I, uh, I mostly spent my life on Titan. I never really left. Um, small, small, small community. I, I, I had money growing up. It was very oh. strange for a belter. Yes, yes. I'm very familiar with Titan, and yeah. But look, you're doing so well with us. Isn't this wonderful? Nobody is dead yet, and we have two relays. Um, are we moving to set up the third? Yes, uh, we could totally do that. We can, you know, help you get through this, get all of them set up so you have your four seasons, and then we can get you back to where you need to be. Yeah, yeah, and then you can deal with the man that has the arm. Oh. It's not an arm, it's a monster. You don't need to worry about that. We will totally take care of that. Could you think uh, right to me? I would, be, I would love to know what happens to Pope. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Um, we can totally let you know what happens. Because I, I, like I know I, you're a curious I person. To, you're smart and Cap curious. So, Cap Captain, I hate to say this, but the longer that we wait, the the more the higher chance um, something bad could happen on that ship. Uh, and I'm not I'm not Potenko's biggest fan, but he is also kind of well, he's a very he's a very smart. Um, very uh, unintelligent person. <laughs> yeah, he he leaving us uh, he leaving oh. us uh, breadcrumbs and asking for help. But then uh, yeah, when we try to approach a ship, you know, he say go away. Mm. Well, I maybe mean, we should have we should have these... shot that thing down. Yeah, let's get the rest of these relays up. <laughs> yeah, and then um, and then we can focus on this next issue. Yeah, we could once the relay set up, we could detect that maybe the stealth tech. Yeah, I, I, I can teach Zenny all the info. Zenny, you have to read like there are there are lots sure. of manuals, but also I could just kind of show you like a tutorial. Um, every I, I, single I kind thing. of learn better by doing so. That maybe uh, maybe that's a yeah 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 maybe okay, I don't have to read nine hundred pages of things I'll never remember. And the, uh, oh, just you can send them on. <laughs> that way we have the whole thing and it's all set, and then Zenny can um, they can. You know, kind of work that through and, and take it all in. Um, as okay. as and that way you don't have to worry about it. As this is going on, Drax gives Zenny the, uh, I'm going to go and I'm sorry look as he <laughs> leaves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Zenny's just kind of like giving, get like flashes back to look that like, ah, you, you lucky son of a bitch, you get to leave. <laughs> I'm going to go down my hole. That we all, yep. all, all of us that are I also feel like Zenny's getting this. Uh, she's now known as the reader of the ship. We're always just I, gonna, yeah. <laughs> gonna give you yep. manuals and books. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Took up a lot of space in your, your, your uh, yeah. storage. You might do your library. Digital, yeah, for yeah. sure. It's okay. Zenny will notice that. Where to stash them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I have a secret. Com I was, yeah, put yeah. in the secret. Yeah, where all my guns go? It's all <laughs> filled with uh, PDFs and books. It'll yeah. be all safe. Zenny uh, knows exactly what file I'm it should all go in. I'm the only one. I'm the only one who knows where it is for sure. <laughs> yeah, so we get. Uh, I'll, I'll get down to uh, get ready to get on the tech again to deploy. Uh, yeah, the next one. Yeah, winter. That's well, yeah, you guys, you guys have to travel like the whole like oh, three yeah, weeks fall. to get there. Yeah, it's all the way to uh, Okay, allons-y. I'll just sit in the suit. <laughs> I'll be just ready. I'm, I'm ready. Better. Let's yep. go. Let the go. Good. Good the, uh, the crew is definitely a buzz with their with the kind of potential of like that kind of a maneuver. None of a lot of them never even hit those kind of G's before in reality. Um, <coughs> that was definitely a, close to the combat a lot of ever came. Um, there's a little bit of, of worry on the ship about about that. Like, holy shit, I, guess, I, I thought we were just deploying satellites. I mean, I knew the ship's armed, but like, I didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, and uh, Johnny got a little shook. Is that a fair, is that a fair, assignment, fair assessment? Got a little shook? Oh, absolutely. The reality of the responsibility that they had been given kind of was sinking in. And they're like, I don't think I've ever told anybody to do anything except maybe like, you know, an assistant that was unpaid. Uh, so the idea of having to like truly make real change, like real life changing decisions, especially when that last decision of the ship, um, yeah. where like, they just like, yeah, let's just wait for the hangar to open. Oh, wait, they have weapons. Oh, they're faster than us. Oh, this might go terribly. I made that choice. Oh no. Uh, yeah. Space is hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
All right. I'm gonna, but while we're doing this, while well, I'm gonna personally talk to every crew member while we're here, mm -hmm. and I've got special chocolates for everyone that oh are edible God. chocolates. They're they're running, and the chocolates are running a little thin. I should mention to you, Merle. But, but these is, are this is my is special. special Edibles stash, stash of chocolate. Captain oh, stash. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. just to like. Don't you guys give it to McMichaels. Well. Yeah. You guys <laughs> did well under pressure. I'll give right. McMichaels like a regular chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> so, Merlin, and everybody else gets like a, a nice edible chocolate. You get you oh, get some yeah. time with a uh, waxor down in the cargo hold. Waxor is just working on the mech, get, making sure it's all you know greased up and ready to go for the next for uh, winter's deployment. Um, and I should mention too, the satellites are actually in the cargo holds around on the external cargo hold. So there's an internal cargo hold you guys can walk around in. There's some on the side of the ship as well that are hard vacuum. So they're in the hard vacuum. Um, yeah, you see, you see uh, Waxer kind of standing there. Uh, Nick Michaels is down doing, he, he has some sort of duty to do, obviously, uh, for, for a change. And uh, Waxer's just maintaining the mech. But you have some time with him if you want to talk to him, Myrtle. Sorry, I'm still getting over duty. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got duty. Space. <laughs> space duty. Space, uh, space <laughs> duty. All right, I think we're done being five years old. Let's go on. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, hey, uh, so hey, you Cap. know, hey, 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 Waxer. Um, you know, I hope everything's good down here. You're doing a great job. You know, keeping an eye on the kids, and yeah. uh, and I really appreciate it. I know this is probably a little bit weird what's happening here but i got you back man yeah it's strange uh you know uh i just uh, i just focus on uh getting the satellite deployed uh, i think getting this communication for the belt is good and uh yeah i, I don't know this pope uh, this thing uh i mean if he's trying to be what we saw on ganymede then uh yeah we I, i'm all for it we gotta stop it yeah and um save your key for whatever but um yeah, no, I think I think you're coming down now. We're running a tight shift. I mean, you know, Mick Michaels, he's just doing uh, what he do. So, well, I mean, he's good at what he do, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He he's and good. Yeah, good. And he got it. He got advice sometimes, but uh, you know, other times I just tell him, "Hey, put the vape pen in your mouth. It just uh, zip it." Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's it's almost sometimes like what we have on Earth. We call it a pacifier. <laughs> And yeah, so, okay. you know, sometimes, you know, it's just like helping with that confidence is sometimes just hold it in your hand ah, will help you feel yeah. confident. And if he feels confident holding it in his hand, hopefully not imbibing on it too much. But yeah, you know, more confident with it in his mouth, I think. But uh. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, hey, it's just like I said, butts and seats and everything went well. So so that's good. So he's holding up, I guess. Yeah, it's but good. You let me know if. if if you need anything, if the team down here needs anything, you let me know and I'll, I'll get you what you need. Yeah, you first to know, Cap. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, you get a moment with uh, the XO, the crew quarters. You want to say there? Cool. You know, this. I, I think this is going to be hard times with. You know, I mean, we know how we know how our planets are with our politics and and stuff. And clearly, that the, the whole like Cold War stuff, you know, is still kind of on, but not really. And you know, I'm I, I don't know. I'm really surprised. You know, that kind of it it just seems like it's about time that some more Martians are not just like lockstep into this whole thing. Um, but I also worry about some of the people making deals with some of the shady ass Martians and I, I mean, Earthers. And so I can tell you there's a shit ton of people on Luna that I wouldn't want to make deals with. So I don't know. It's just, just kind of crazy to me. There's a lot of them on Mars too. I don't know what's going to happen with all this. I, I think it's going to be some very interesting times coming up. Whatever this date thing is, is it's going to change everything. It already has changed everything. Yeah. So yeah. I think we're I don't on the know right if, side, so. I think we're on the right side, yeah. I have no doubt in that. Yep. Uh, so that's the good thing is that we're both on the, both on the same page as the, you know, as the heads always like to say, you know, yeah. in their in their politics. But truly, we're on the same page here. We're here Absolutely. for our family, and we're here for everybody who's out here. Yep. 
this is our family right here. Got to keep yep. ourselves protected. Yep. Okay. I'd like one of you to broach the topic here of your encounter with Jeff uh, that happened out here and the possibility of your possible your theory on Pope. Uh, and will you be sharing that with the OPA command, uh, namely one Colonel Fred Johnson? I think we absolutely need to talk to people about this. This guy is very dangerous. Uh, I'd be more than happy to go hunt him down if they give us the, you know, the opportunity. And I don't want to see this guy out here anymore. I think we should maybe go uh, talk to Mr. Johnson. Um, I'm with you on that. I think it would be good to talk to Fred. I mean, he's proven to be a friend to the belt and to, you know, people that are trying to cut through the politics of our planets, right? You yeah. know, and make a better space out here for everyone. So I think that we could talk to Fred and he'd listen and see where we go from there. Um, how this works yeah, out with Dawes. Yeah, yeah, that's the... <laughs> For all we know, Poe could be working with Dawes. I mean, you know, Dawes has done us really well, but I kind of don't trust him as much as I trust Dawes, as much as I trust Johnson. Yeah, I agree. I think we have more in common with Mr. Johnson, so. Yeah, I would agree with you. And, and to be clear, Johnson has an interest because he's bankrolling a lot of this, so. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's invested. Yeah, I try. Yeah. <laughs> Money talks. Um, yeah, so I, I think that I think this is a conversation that we could have maybe with a little bit of history, you know, kind of give more history about our governments and stuff with Zenny and Mike and, and uh, Waxer, um, yeah. you know, because we're the family. I don't think everybody on the crew needs to really get down in the nitty gritty about this, but I think maybe we should look at a visit to Tycho. I agree. Um, if while you're kind of having that, I could, um, it's uh, Johnny really wants to host like um, an hour to two hour long seminar with whatever crew can like be spared um, on just like establishing your own, like how to make a, um, a wide beam, you know, like how to create your own mini radio. Um, they just really, really are passionate about um, yeah. You, so yeah, you, you put this out, and you actually get a few takers uh, from the uh, the general crew. Zenny uh, also will go. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so proud to see you. The pilot. Is, <laughs> uh, the pilot Mikhail is definitely interested in it, and so is the uh, cook uh, slash life support expert uh, Yuri, and then Drax is down for it too. Uh, I don't think the senior crew. McMichael's is is okay. Oh, I'm there. I, yeah, yeah Rex so will go. Yeah, I'll go. What do you think, Cap? Should we go sit in on this? Uh, why don't you go? I'll stay up here and keep an eye on everything. All right, I'll go. We'll take notes. We we'll take notes for Cap. Okay. You you host this down in the machine shop. Uh, it's a good spot mm -hmm. to do it. Uh, and uh, you uh, you know, you, tell me about your seminar. <laughs> okay, so first off, it was only supposed to be an hour and a half. Oh, um, I wasn't. Oh gosh, it ended up being like three and a half hours. <laughs> Um, a couple people might have fallen asleep. Uh, Johnny does not notice. Um, after they kind of teach everybody about like the basics of creating your own like wide beam, like specialized radio using like any of the tools that you have in your own ship, which is a lot, but besides the point. Um, and then they talk about like their, their extensive education on like specialized telecommunication on a planetoid system, uh, on a planetoid scale systems. And it's, it's just a lot of big words that don't really appeal to anybody. And then actually, after, there's one oh. there's one member in the, in the crew, Justine, the head engineer. So Justine's like this, like like almost seven foot belter. Uh, she has uh, skin indicating like that from like uh, she would be like descended from Earth or like largely from Africa, but her skin's kind of grayish. Like you're pretty sure she's never seen natural sunlight in her life. Mm -hmm. And but she's the head engineer and. One of the things, like, you start assembling these kind of, like, radios, and she's, like, got her head's completely shaved. She's got a ton of tattoos, everything like that, too. She's, like, this hardcore belter. And um, she uh, she says, um, she assembles a radio in front of you, and you're looking at it, and you're like, this is a hunk of junk. This looks like, <laughs> like, like, you know, uh, bubblegum wrappers and bubblegum. And you're looking at it, and she flips it on, and it fucking works brilliantly. Uh, Al, did you do that? 
Like you just put the thing, you put the thing on the thing, and the thing works. You, 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 you get too close to the to down the well. You too close to the gravity, man. I she, and she basically goes on explains like she spent she was born like on a rock hopper and like really hasn't really been on like the planetoids much. Mm hmm. Uh, dang, that must seem sick. It's really magnetic. That is very cool. I just I've never had to use them, utilize so few resources. I've always had access to like copper and do some plastic and. Uh, I mean. Me, me, mama, me, papa, they have me uh, rebuild the comma ray when I was like seven years old. I have to be able to rebuild it every few years, otherwise it don't work. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm done this seminar in, uh, in uh, tw 20 more minutes. Do you have like um, four hours of your evening to perhaps, you know, <laughs> just explain everything you've done in your childhood and every single creation that you've made? <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. She's like, no problem, boss man. I do it for you, no problem. And she's like, we, we can do it over tea. We could do it down the machine shop, wherever you're comfortable with LT. Uh, uh, you can decide. I don't. I don't. I honestly forgot everywhere this is. In this there's place. like a machine shop, and there's the engineering below that. So, but she, she's like, yeah, we hang he on the machine shop, and yeah. A Johnny just refuses to remember. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, she's like, yeah. And she points over. She's like, yeah. She's like, I don't leave him much. I don't go much above the cargo bay because, like, and she points like her bunk, like her crew quarters are down here in the machine shop. Uh, that was big uh, balls, but <laughs> we don't. We... <laughs> We don't acknowledge that yeah. part. Oh, <laughs> we don't acknowledge his capacity for privacy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even acknowledge ours, so we don't acknowledge his. Um, but yeah, she she kind of she goes and she tells you about her life. I mean, like this is like a hardcore belter. Like mm -hmm. her time in the gravity well, you could tell that's probably why she passed out during the maneuvers. Yeah, um, was that she hasn't really been exposed to too much, and you can see like her um, like where her her arms are and her spine is a little more extended than most people's on here. She probably didn't have much of like the, the the growth drugs and everything growing up, so she didn't have the a more we'll say, for lack of a better term, privileged Belter uh, upbringing. No, seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's like yeah. She kind of goes through and tells you about like how like uh, most of the stuff she has to tell you about like her technological knowledge is less like actually like book smart, but more about like a story about having to fix something in the field. Mm -hmm. Kind of saw it all, did it all at a very young age, um, and for very survival. resourceful. Yeah. yeah. But she's and she's just kind of like hanging out and and, and down to talk about whatever. Uh, did you have anything you want to talk about about her with or? Uh, no, just telecommunications. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so she's someone like to geek out about hours, <laughs> for hours and talking about the manuals that they've read and like they're gonna they're gonna send them all of basically like the tele like the communications information um that they had sent to Zenny. Like I do not tell anyone because this is like I it's, 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 uh, it's technically secret OPA information, but it's it's fine. You can add it. She's like, yeah, man. She's like, yeah, the OPA man. We always be OPA, but we never tell people. But we, I remember getting pulled over by Martians. We have become boarded by Martians, boarded by others. You know, uh, all of them, the Dusta, the Squats, whoever they are, they come on on. She actually starts throwing around like the derogatory terms for Earthers and Martians. Mm -hmm. uh, feels pretty comfortable using a belter uh, throwing that around. Um, but she, it's more of like, she usually doesn't do that, you can tell, but it's more out of like frustration with those circumstances that she was, they were pulled over basically several times, mm -hmm. uh, talk about the hard times of it. So she's kind of like, yeah, no, I, you know, it's no good, but, um, yeah, I'm, you know, but they, you gotta, we got a way here to fight back now. We gotta put this up and your communication thing, that's, that's smart. Is it this relay? project, it's so ambitious. Um, and I think I want Ajani to kind of like, we want to like kind of uh, end the scene a little bit, um, for them to kind of share their dream, their dream of like community, like, uh, um, a planet wide communications for belters with no interruptions and no threat of having that taken away or just like having those privileges revoked. Like it is something that would be created for them by them. Well, and, and she's like, and you just put down the first stone. Uh, yes, but it, it was it was called uh, it was called summer, but it was it's like a relay. Uh, <laughs> and, and that's the thing about this. This ain't gonna be the last stone we put down. All this. All right, cut the scene out. All right, it's called foreshadowing, people. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, Merle, you got some time with Denny. So, you know. This is interesting, eh? <laughs> Which part? The the satellites, the lieutenant, the pope. You know, I think Which the part? satellites are good. Was... I can see you. What? No, I like the satellite idea. No, but mm. I will kind of be happy when um, we're kind of making our own decisions. Um, you Here's know, the bless thing, their Captain, heart. Like it. it... 
We did sign up for this, though. As we soon did. as we said, yes, we're going to be part of your Navy, we gave up the ability to really make our own decisions in the long run. I mean, as you as you obviously showed, we can make our own decisions just fine for a little bit. But yeah. I mean, no, that's, I mean, that's the reality you know, this of was, it. I mean, I mean, this was a uh, this was actually you know not a bad thing. We've learned a lot being out here, and you know, and it's good to know that uh, maybe anybody else that's sent out here with this might also not have the experience that we have out here and so we're kind of helping you know yeah. to you know because the lieutenant you know is very smart obviously very very smart but yeah, you know doesn't have the same experience that we have out here yeah but we can learn from them and they can learn from us here's the thing but... captain here's here's the thing yeah there's going to be a time when we're going to be given someone, someone's going to be given to us, let's be real. We're going to be given to someone. Yeah. And they're not going to be like this lieutenant. They're going to be right. someone who wants us to do something and is not going to take no for an answer. You're right. What are you going to do, do it, about uh, that? You know what? Because that's, what, that's what the plan. OPA does. You know? And I mean, like, they're trying to be better, and I can kind of see that. But, like... They do what they... Yeah, what if we get put under the command want? of somebody... You know, if we get put under somebody's shit command... You know, that could be bad. So, what I would like us to do, and I'm hoping that you and Waxer and Wyatt, is that we need to have a plan that looks at you know, are we really doing what's right versus, I don't know, we need to have a backup plan for ourselves. I think, I think you know, think, if we need to, right, if we yeah. need to exit out of here, mm -hmm. yeah, is that we need to have a plan because, you know, we've got, not only do we have our family here, but there's family outside of here that we have to think about, you know? whether it's your brother whether you know it's my wife whatever we've, we've still got other family out there so we need to have some different plans to set up so that way if we decide that we need to exit this this deal in some way is that we're taking care of our people that they won't suffer for whatever we decide to do that's really been what's on my mind. And I, I think that Waxer and Wyatt will agree with this, too. What do you want to do about Butenko? Because we, I mean, we, we didn't technically put him in that mess. He kind of chose it. But we did make sure that he was able to get into the mess that he's in right now. That's a really good question. Uh, we should probably hash it out. Maybe we'll find out some, just carve in some time. But the four of us can sit down and decide how we want to handle this. Yeah. I, I think I that we should look into that. Especially with everything. If if Pope has that, has that proto-molecule stuff anywhere on his ship, I mean, I only saw I didn't I didn't see all that stuff up close like you all did and I don't want that anywhere near anyone. Even out here, if, if that goes through the ring, if that whatever's over there at the ring, whatever's over there, if it gets anywhere, that could be I don't know. I yeah, mean, I it, mean did, it seems so one, small. One like thing did something say. on yeah. It's just like everybody's like, oh, it's just far out there. It doesn't matter, but it does matter. It matters a lot because we don't know what this is going. And if if there's some kind of experiment, if there's some kind of projects, and you know, I don't know, maybe he needs an extract extraction. Maybe something's happening. I, I don't know. I think just maybe by like still being around him in some ways that maybe he doesn't feel alone, and maybe he can help himself along with 
you know? I don't know. I really don't know. It's just we, we need to talk it through as a crew to see what we want to do. Okay. Hey, Myrtle, so you're going to do the rounds, and McMichael sees you walking around and goes, Hey, Cap, Cap, hey, I got to talk to you real quick. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah, the scene yeah, I've up? been waiting all episode for. Goes, <laughs> hey, after that, after that cock of the, that cock of float that happened out there with us, uh, with whatever the hell that was out there, uh, yeah. I just want to say I, I heard came down the came down the way. I heard what happened with the the LT. Now I'm just gonna say, man, you know, say the word. I follow you. Whatever you guys say about anything, I won't trust on you. I saw how the, I saw that today. It was got a shot up, man. You ain't never got a shot, so I'm with you. I appreciate that, man. You're our family. So, you know, man, you, you, he's like, he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't want them to know, but man, you, you, the, you, you guys, you're the ones that pulled me out of that mess on Ganymede, so, you know, I, I got, you got my back. Got your back, man. Hey, if they, if, if Anderson Dawes himself walked that airlock and tell me to do something, and you tell me to do something different, I'll listen to you. I appreciate that, man. Like I said, you know, it's like we're a found family, and you're our family now. Yeah. So we're here for you. What you, whatever you need, whatever you got to work through, we work uh -huh. together. It's like, and I, uh, you're here for me. I'm here for you. Yeah, man. Cause I don't, I you know, Fred Johnson. He okay, but he he ain't gonna let you smoke on a ship. That's all right. Don't worry about him. I got this. I still, I still got you, man. I mean, he's cool, but he ain't that cool. Well, he's gonna be the cool. But I got words. Okay. All right. Well, we all. I got good. words I can say with the man. I got words I can say with the man. So okay. we'll be fine. It'll be, we'll good. be good. Yeah. Okay. All right, I just want you to know that, Captain. I want you to know you do a good job. Don't let anyone tell you different. Okay, man. I appreciate right. it. He, We're family. He buggers off. Back to loading whatever he's doing. All right. All right. So um, you continue on to out, out, uh, Springs deployed a problem. Winter gets deployed. Uh, are, are we doing winter next? Is that what the order we're going? We're going reverse. Yeah. Uh, you're a belter. You just... You're a belter. You don't know any better. I picked uh, them randomly, you don't know so I is. really didn't know. They're just really <laughs> cool-sounding words. They are cool-sounding <laughs> words, yeah. Um, I just assume nobody knows what an actual season is. Exactly. So it doesn't matter uh, what order it is here. Yeah. yeah. The seasons are we have a uh, clockwise rotation of the Could station. Alphabetical. Have clockwise rotation. <laughs> <laughs> so you um you head out to, uh you deploy winter, and you eventually deploy fall. The, the whole array gets up, no problem, set up there. Um, yeah. A, uh, Woo! A little bit, uh, mission, missions assembled, uh, a lot of you kind of feel a little bit, uh, lurking out in the, out in the very black space around you, outside the elliptical, Pope's out there somewhere, um, he might be looking at you, he may not be, he may be, God knows what he's doing, but he's got Yakid Batenko, and he's got a, a very advanced science vessel, uh, with what looks to be an attack ship on board. Um, Myrtle, you get a you get a response. Uh, you and you and uh, the XO get a little tight beam comes in from Fred Johnson himself. Uh, Fred kind of gives you the rundown. Yeah, I do my best, Fred Johnson here. That's hard. Ooh, I'm ready. Uh, the, the 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 problem is that Chad Coleman is a is a big dude and he he has a lot of breath when he speaks and I can't like I feel like I'm gonna pass out when I try to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, um, he's like. Yeah, until until the intelligence I've gotten back says uh, hope is hope is alive based on the image you sent, very alive. The, the item on his arm seems to be based on his cryogenical tech. Cryo, not genital, his cryogenic tech. I'm not sure what that may be or may be used for, but uh, he suspects it's a molecule. Could be. I don't know where he would have gotten it, but if he has it, based on your based on the report I got back from uh, your little incident outside of Luna, you may still have access to it. He may be off the carrier of it. I'm gonna deploy uh, one of my trusted. Unfortunately, my uh, my CSO uh, Vol is on gonna, is gonna be on uh, doing a special mission for me here in the next few months, uh, serving on the uh, behemoth. So I'm gonna send you my vice chief security officer, Dingo. Uh, he's worked with the man. He's familiar with you. He does good work. Yeah. yeah. Um, but once you can get back. Uh, Ask you to get back to Tycho Station. You can pick him up, and he'll deploy with you on whatever we need in, in the search of this uh, 
hope guy. Uh, whether or not we need, I'll let Dingo decide what what needs to be done. Trust the man with his life. With my life. Uh, I do worry about the optics of sending out another Earther, another inner to uh, issue commands out to a bunch of Belters, but I'm hoping they'll overlook all. A lot of them will overlook that with uh, not worry about too much, seeing as uh, there's bigger things to worry about. And he kind of points like an image of the ring behind him. All right. <laughs> See you in a, I'll see you in about uh, see you about a month and a half, uh, right out. And that he so he's issued his orders to come back to Tycho Station and pick up Dingo. Um, Sweet. Maria's excited. I'm <laughs> so excited. <laughs> um, so excited. So excited. So um, yeah. So uh, uh, Johnny, do you have any? Are you guys, well, everything it's all good. Everything it's set up. The relay is working. It's communicating with Sirius Station with Tycho Station. No problem. Um, it's going back to your own original network, uh, synced up. It seems like you've gotten out, out through here and back without even like really worried about the UN and the Martians. And this wasn't trying to be kept a secret from the Martians, the UN. And honestly, they don't, they don't really care. Uh, they have bigger fish to fry that are, you know, that are ring shaped. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, um, through, uh, taking you back to wherever you want to be dropped. Where, where do you want to be dropped off at? Titan or you want to be dropped off at Ceres or where do you want to go? Probably Titan. Titan. I'm drama. not. If it wasn't clear, a uh, little, a uh, little, little, little Johnny is not uh, not well traveled. You know, they like for communications to be spread far and wide, but um, they just want to be in one place. And they leave everybody with like a a handmade um, uh, wide uh, wide beam, so like a radio, okay. um, so you can pick up a lot of channels and whatnot. Um, but obviously, Justine's is the coolest. <laughs> Um, I just and so everybody has a little something to kind of remember them by. Yes, Aww. yes. I like it. Thank oh, you. A little fun learn. It kind of reminds you of uh, what you would kind of like assemble, uh, like in like high school class type thing. You know, type, type situation. So it's not exactly. in advance, but it, but it's, it does the trick. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So you, you guys say your goodbyes on, uh, as a, you're, you board a shuttle that's going to take you down to the surface. Of Titan, no problem. Um, and everything. Uh, does any of the crew have anything to say to a Johnny before uh, the lieutenant leaves for the next assignment in the OPA Navy? It was a pleasure, hey, lieutenant. It was. Yeah, yeah. It it's was so good honor. to meet you, and yeah. Yeah, it's been an honor, and what you're doing for the belt, I will never forget. And I'm very proud to be a part of, of helping you deploy all that. Yeah. History. You were there for the making of history. Yes. Yes, for the belt. Belt a loda. Belt a loda. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and Justine, make sure to kind of before you go, kind of uh, gives you uh, her radio sheet, her handmade radio that she made out of like the Aww. sparest of parts, we'll say. And uh, and uh, and says, uh, yeah, I left a little something for you on the bottom. Oh, look at the bottom, and, it, and it's got like engraved on it, kind of machine engraved, but it has like a um, like a specific like a address that will go to like her own personal kind of e like. Email box if you're interested in talking to her. Give further. you her oh. number. Oh, it only took two months. Oh my god. Uh, I love it. Um, and then I think the final thing that Johnny um, will do is to pull um, Myrtle aside. Um, <clears throat> uh, I just want to say that I am very grateful for your leadership. You are the kind of captain that I have never seen there. There are not normally captain that that are so kind and um, ooh, uh, empathetic and um, hmm, uh, listen. Um, so you do, you are doing something that I think is very valuable. Um, and you made my responsibility quite, um, quite easy. Um, so if anybody asks, I definitely did my job the whole time. Okay. I appreciate that. Like I, like I said, you've probably heard me say this numerous times. We're a family here. It shows. No? And so uh, you're what you, you hang with us. We're going to treat you like family while you're here. Uh, merci. It is really good. I want you to take care, okay? Okay. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. <laughs> All right. You guys the last say thing, the only thing that Zenny will say, besides like the pleasantries of like, have a good time, is that uh, you read a lot, right? You you said so yourself. Wait. Um, the one thing that I would advise you to do is read a little less and go out and do things a little more. Because you, 
You can read a lot. You can learn a lot of things in here. But you're not going to be able to know what's going on unless you go out and do it, right? So go visit other places. Go visit other stations. Meet other people. If and then you are... don't have to rely on 900 page manuals to get something done. If the people I meet are anything like you, then uh, I think that it'll be worth it. Zenny will leave you to go on your adventures. Oh. I mean, Michael kind of gives you a salute all the way out and everything you know, as, you, as you board and take off. You guys have been he together break, for about... He breaks the vape pen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. Um, he has seven in, like, reserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He pulls another one out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's symbolic. So, but yeah, you, you, all, you all kind of say your goodbyes, and after being deployed for like almost like I mean six months out there, honestly, that was a long, it's a long ways out there. It's a very long ways. Um, but I think that's a good place to end for us then uh, for the sh- for the, for the first episode of Moloch's Gambit. Yeah. Uh, let me let me start by thanking our guest. Uh, yes. C. Uh, yes, thank you. Yes. I, I want to remind all our viewers right now we have a giveaway going where we are giving away a set uh, of six uh, miniatures, pewter miniatures, I might add, too, from uh, Stonehaven Miniatures. They make, I, I hate to break it, like, I, I say this with, like, before I even, like, talk to them to get uh, how to help our giveaways, they make some of the best known halfling miniatures ever. Like, they really do. They're known as halflings. They're fantastic. Um, They're really good. But please, you can go and type in the word navy into the. Uh, chat. There's just the word Navy, and you will be entered to win this. Uh, we'll do the giveaway here in a moment. Um, B, please tell people uh, who you are, what you do, and where where they can find you. Ooh, who am I? I don't know. Sometimes I'm B. Um, what do I do? I do a lot of things, but also I spend a lot of my other time not doing things. However, you are far more interested in the activities that I do online, which are podcasting. I'm the host of Anime Attaché. Honestly, I guessed on a butt ton of things. I don't really know what. I'm also a TTRPG Twitch streamer. I'm trying to ramp down my schedule, but I don't know how to say no. I'm sure I understand the word, but I haven't really figured it out. So I'm streaming D&D tomorrow with Roll For It. Oh, wow. Um, um, right. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm also, it's because I'm a guest, so I can either be like that very helpful person or just like, um, um chaos, 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 chaos villain. Yes, <gasps> <You know? laughs> and I'm leaning towards chaos villain. You know, mm. I got to get out like my, my nervous, like nerdy, like I, like I, I want to help everyone, but also I can't, I can't operate like <laughs> this. You want me to, to exist and help crew a ship? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in charge. No. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Well, I, I thought it was really interesting. Uh, thinking about that actually was really interesting was that like the chaos element was there because you're in command, but you kind of like flustered under the command a little bit because it's it's suddenly mm-hmm. new to your character. That you, mm-hmm. you 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 ran your own kind of private corporation, which is one thing, and to do these little smaller operations, but to actually like be in charge of people's lives and be willing to like do you you know it's very uh, different to, to to you know tell people what to do when you're on the ground but a completely different experience when you're in the ship and you're a part of the decisions that yeah. are being made mm-hmm. it's Absolutely. a lot of re- responsibility yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um i also want to say uh yeah so this is our phase three of our precipice other uh, than b uh, what you think of the game what do you think of like uh, you've read the expanse books and you're kind of a fan what you any uh, thoughts on this I oh, yeah. really enjoyed it. Okay, so like I am always a skeptic when it comes into I've I play a lot of systems. A lot of systems to the point where I'm like if I if I can't jump into it right away, mm-hmm. if I don't understand the system right away, if I can't comprehend the character sheet right away, I probably don't like it. I didn't have a single issue. Um the die rolls, except for my own, you know, personal math, were <laughs> easy. It makes sense. The character sheet flows wonderfully. You know, there's there's sections where you really have to pay attention to. Mm-hmm. The universe, you know, it's a universe that we all know and we all kind of um, interface with in our own ways. But nonetheless, there are a lot of things that we just get. And it was really, really fun to navigate in a space where, like, there's consequences for gravity. Um, you know, it takes a long-ass time to turn a ship around. If you're too big, it takes time to get your ass moving. Like, it's just, I love, I love, 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 love space, not even space combat, just space existence. So it was wonderful to be a part of that. And I'm very grateful. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. And then my other, my, yeah. And then my last question, I mean, so does, this, does this kind of match the expanse feel a little bit? Yes. Okay. 
Um, I appreciated a little bit of, le- like, a little bit more levity. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, when there were serious situations happening, it felt like yeah. that was a big deal. I'm like, we could have died. Oh, yes. Like, mm-hmm. and I absolutely recognized that. And that was, you know, part of, like, the, oh, heck, I think I just messed up. Yeah, one of the one of the easiest damages to do to a ship is to evacuate the air in a section. And none of you had uh, helmets <laughs> going into combat. So mm-hmm. that would have been a, uh, the right section would have cleared it pretty quick. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's 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 definitely a, a, a gambit. Uh, and space combat is very lethal on this. One thing I like I like about the expanse, and it should be because it's scary yeah, space. it feels lethal. If you wanted, yeah, if you want to do it, like I mean, be prepared for the, the consequences of it. Even if you win the fight, it's gonna suck. Ooh, yeah. um, the uh, we have other stuff kind of uh, going on too. We have a Patreon, uh, which you can, if you want to join that, we kind of preview stuff, what's going on. We let our people know what's going on ahead of time there. Um, and uh, we also do some, maybe do some voting on some future stuff here and there, but uh, it's a great way, it's one of the best ways to support the show. Uh, we have our information here, which you can go find through our link tree, which has links to our past episodes on YouTube, our Twitch channel, our social media, and even the podcast version. If you want to catch up listening to it, you can listen to it on any platform, almost any platform. Uh, for some reason, we're, mo- we're the most popular on the Samsung podcast platform, which we didn't know they had a Samsung podcast platform until we found that out, but I'll take it. Um, <laughs> I don't care where I'm popular, as long as I'm popular. Um, <laughs> A lot of us are going to be at Gen Con actually next month too. Uh, and if you see me, let me know. I'll get you one of our, I don't have, it's like the one thing I don't have in front of me is our business cards. I actually made Abrax Express business cards, which I'm really excited about. They're really cool. Now I'm just looking around. Where's my cards? Where's my cards? <laughs> they're all over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they're uh, in the with uh, the Skate Wizard or well, let me, so let me know if, in a car if you see me at yeah. the at Gen Con, let me know and I'll, I'll have some with me and I'll yeah. give you one. Uh, they're really fun. Uh, but I mean, honestly, they have all the information. If you're watching our show right now, congratulations. It has all the information there anyway. So. Um, and then uh, we have our giveaway going. Type in the word Navy real quick. I'll pull the winner in a moment. And then last thing, last before uh, we say our goodbye for the night, is we have a special announcement for August. Um, we're gonna, I'll roll it at the end of this. It's a big thing for us. Uh, for those who don't know, we've had, uh, we had guest people on the show. And one of the best honors we've ever had is actually having people from the Expanse television show play with us. We've had it happen twice. Uh, we had with Patty Kim back in December, which we raised a bunch of money uh, for uh, the, Indian Residential School Survivor Society. If I remember, it's, just, it's a long name, guys. Give me, give me a break. It's been months, okay? It's called, it's called 2022 has happened. And so, um, and then we did another game with Jacob Mundell, who played Eric in season uh, five. Um, Jacob Mundell's coming back in all of August. All four episodes of ours in August will have Jacob Mundell, who played Eric from The Expanse, play, returning as the character Dingo. Um, he's so good. And he's it's, so good. I'm so excited. <laughs> he is an absolute blast. Um, our approach has always been with the people from the show. Uh, who would? Who do you wish you would play? Who Who would you want to play in this universe? And given them the opportunity, and Jacob's also, he, he's a nerd. He plays Pathfinder. He's in the Starfinder. Um, and uh, he's been an absolute, he, our episode with him was an absolute delight. Uh, Maria had one of the most, had an, a lot of fun. Uh, I got to slap him. You did get to slap him. It was really great. <laughs> it was yeah. real yes. good. <laughs> it was good. Um, and so we're very excited about that for August. Uh, that'll start up here. So, uh, and then we're playing right now through the Baden's Gate kind of storyline of uh, the expanse. So if you follow along with the books, and once again, the RPG is based on the books, not the show. So we have to kind of like navigate that a little bit here and there. But it's some subtle differences. Um, but yeah, everyone, thank you so much for watching it. We had so many people come in. I'm gonna go and pull a winner. Last chance to enter the giveaway. Type in Navy. Uh, let me go ahead and grab this real quick. You know, I have to hit a button here. The button. There's the button. I'm gonna push the button, and the button pulled back. Uh, Massive Damage Adventures. Our buddies over at Massive Damage Adventures. Uh, they're, they're great. They are running a uh, their own ex- expanse called Hellbreakers right now. Little little, uh, little thing. I'm not sure how long they're going with it, but it's kind of a mercenary thing. It's kind of fun. Um, but please uh, contact me after the. Um, I, think I think it's Massive Damage is doing that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, please contact me after the, uh, I'll contact you after the show and we'll set that up to make sure you get all the stuff that you need um, and uh, everything. Be an absolute pleasure. An absolute yes. pleasure. Yes. Thank you for being adapted to us. Thank you uh, for working with us. Thank you for uh, playing a great game, a good complicated character. Um, I liked how, I really liked how your character, when they were in their element, they wanted to stick to their element to keep that part like focused on. But when they got pulled out and the, the shit hit the fan, wasn't their best, but I, I really respect that. And I, I respect mm-hmm. a player who's willing to kind of like go through the, the motions of the situation and such. So thank you so much for playing with us. 
Um, but we'll be back next week with another episode out of Hot Rocks and Precipice, Moloch's Gambit. Woo! All right, later, everyone. Bye. Transition button. <laughs>